Rolling North right, guys, Carolina. One more time. Let's go to uh, okay, Both guys, we're getting Rogers. underway. Uh, Oscar owns Hard Times Billiards in Sacramento, and uh, sponsored by Q Tech. Or not Q-Tech. I apologize. That's terrible. Sponsored by Predator Qs. I was sitting here next to uh, Ben, who's next sponsored to ben, by Q-Tech. Who is yeah. sponsored by Q-Tech, and I was looking at Ben thinking, Johnny's sponsored by uh, Brunswick Tables, Championship Billiard Fabric, Q-Sticks International, Light Systems out of New York, and the pool room he's working on is Johnny Archer's Place, and I believe there are plans to have multiple locations uh, I think yeah. they have a commitment for something like a half a dozen franchises or something like that already. I was talking to uh, <clears throat> Rodney Morris Friday night about that. and uh, So, yeah, so look for some uh, pool rooms. Johnny Archer's Place coming up soon. So we're about to get underway here with Oscar Dominguez. This is Joey Ryan from Pool Player Podcast, and I'm joined by my buddy Jimmy Mendoza. Hello. Legendary player in the yeah. southwest part of the country. Legend on, in my own house. <laughs> uh, Oscar coming out with a solid break to start. Yes, he is. He, he put the pounding on that on those balls, but... Uh, Got a little unfortunate there. The way the, yeah, the way the 10 caromed off the one... It almost looked like the one was going to pop out for a look, but... I'll tell you what, if that's how he's going to break all day, though, uh, it's going to be a... could potentially be a short day. Yeah. Uh, because eventually that 10 ball won't be landing in front of the 1 ball. Yeah. So where do you think he's going to push, or you think he might even try to kick this ball, Jimmy? He what might, do you think? He may even try to kick just because uh, if he pushes... Okay, he is going to push. He's looking down here between the four and five, probably try to get as close to the end rail as possible. Okay, so he went ahead and he was trying to make it a little tougher. He was trying to tie up the two ball. Um, that way if he, you know, he knew there's going to be a safety battle ensuing here, whether he kicked or pushed. So he was just trying to tighten things up. But, uh, <laughs> as soon as uh, Oscar's done shooting that shot, everybody's looking around for Johnny Archer. I think he, he tried to run and take a quick bathroom break here. <laughs> uh, and nobody actually noticed that. <laughs> so, we'll be underway in a second, folks. It's uh, Well, you know, after enough orbits around the, around the sun, you start to have to use the restroom a little more. Yeah, I've heard that, actually. <laughs> Uh, Says the guy that needed to stop at every gas station on the way up here from oh Phoenix. <laughs> I, well, I drank a, plenty of liquid on the way up. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why I can say that, because I know it. I hey, Tom, what's up? Thanks for jumping in the, uh, the Facebook feed. If you don't have the, uh, the pay-per-view, you want to check it out, because this is only going to be up for a couple games. And we're in for, I think, a really competitive set here. If you guys, for those of you that caught it yesterday, it was really neck and neck all the way up until 18, 18 to 18. I mean, I think Oscar got up by two a couple Oscar times. Oscar got up by four at one point. Oh, did he? Yeah. And Johnny got up by three Johnny, once. Yeah, Johnny was up by uh, two multiple times. At, yeah. at least two or three times. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Archer. Johnny Archer comes back from his break and he looks at the push. And he looks to Oscar and he said, nah, you got to take that. I, I got to get warmed up <laughs> before I take a shot like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Johnny, uh, Johnny's a character. He's having a lot of fun out here. You know, I'm sure he wants to win really bad, but uh, he's just going to make the best of it and have fun no matter what. Let's see if I can put that link in there for you, Tom. It's, uh, I think, Audio Video Web. Let me see. 
so he's coming with a shot right to start. He's gonna try to, he's gonna try to spear this in with some uh, low left. And he did, he just didn't get the, uh, the left. To, oh wait, he got a little, he got a little love tap there. Nice shot. Yeah, Steve, unfortunately, no. The pay-per-view chat is not working, and it's not just with this stream. Apparently, it's uh, system-wide, so a lot of the streamers that use that particular pay-per-view service, which, you know, there's a number of other ones, I think are having the same issue with the chat function. So Johnny came with a nice shot right off the bat. Now he can, I suspect, he'll elect to kind of swing this around two rails underneath the 10 ball. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way. Could come inside, but I think you're right, Jimmy. I think he'll hit this with some outside English. Just like that. And guys, we are using the Aramith Black Balls. Aramith's a sponsor here. They provided the balls for this event. And uh, if you aren't familiar with the Aramith Black Balls, there's a few things to point out right now. One is the four ball, which Johnny's about to shoot, which is pink in this set and the five ball is purple so pretty much every pool ball you've probably ever used had a purple four ball uh, but this one's a little different also the nine ball is the yellow and black rather than yellow and white and the ten ball is blue and black which sometimes gets a little confusing when you're looking at the eight ball and or two ball compared to how that ten ball is kind of laying on the table at any time Yeah, I was thinking about that yesterday, Steve, if there was some way we could set up some kind of our own chat group outside of uh, the stream, that would be kind of an interesting idea. Of course, I could see some people being like, get me out of this thing, I'm getting notifications every second. But So Johnny's got a steep cut here on this four ball. Yeah, he does. Well, the making the ball isn't... Uh yeah, it's a, isn't even the bigger problem. It's how to get to the seventh ball. Yeah. Well, he's headed up in that direction. Oh, he's banking, oh, he's banking it. it. He's banking it. Okay. He's, well, he's kind of playing a little bit of a two-way, I would think. Yeah, he actually played in one fact, way. He was playing, <laughs> he was playing one way. Yeah, he, didn't, he, he did call it. He did call the, the pocket, but uh, clearly he didn't. He was more focused on getting safe. Yeah, he called it in case somebody hit his cue in the back and... <laughs> <laughs> and he shot it three times harder than earthquake. he intended. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, you know, Johnny did a, so this table, we mentioned before, tight pockets. Johnny did a really good job of getting control of this rack. Got to a point where, you know, normal size pockets, he probably cuts that five ball in. But here he decides to play safe. Plays a good one, and Oscar's now considering a jump to get at this just to make sure he makes a good hit. just heard Oscar under his breath say I'm gonna play the double kiss so that would be interesting all right I had to lean back and put my little eye drops in looks like I didn't miss the shot yeah he's calling it in the bottom right and the idea is he's if he gets some kind of crazy double kiss it might score it over there that's what he's thinking you know, that's a shot. We talked about the big cue ball yesterday a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's a shot with, uh, especially on the bar boxes, you hit it with that big cue ball. Look, he did double well, he kiss did that double square. Kiss. But you could almost make those double kisses with a big cue ball from like oh, six, yeah. eight inches away every time, you know? Johnny's a little, Johnny's uh, a little, little chatterbox fun. today. He tells Oscar that uh, shots like that, he tells the guys, don't even try it, it's a little over your pay grade. <laughs> so he's got a natural angle to just hit this with, uh, just roll it, maybe a touch of running English, meaning left-hand English, and uh, come to this side cushion underneath Ooh. the eight, just like that. Yeah, he didn't pocket the ball though did not pocket the ball. You know what's funny is he hit it and... You didn't see that, did you? I didn't you? even see it. I, yeah. for, as soon as he hit it, it looked like it was him to me. And, 
Uh, yeah. Old age is tough, Jimmy, you know? It is. Getting it is. up there. It's an old timer's disease. Yeah, trust me, I'm getting there. I'm only a few months behind you, brother. The funny thing is, is sometimes, you know, when I start to feel like, you know, the effects of almost being around the sun 50 times, I'll tell a friend of mine who, you know, somebody who might be like in their 60s and they're looking at me like, yeah, shut up. Yeah. So anyway, wow, that's, uh, well, early, early on, you know, both players, uh, I wouldn't say there's jitters at this point, but you know what it's like early on. You're not like oh, yeah. really 100% focused yet. You're not really, you know. You got to get settled in. You yeah, know, you I don't care who in. you are. You just, it's very hard to walk up to a pool table and start playing your best pool in the first five or ten minutes. So, Johnny's looking at crossing this ball, uh, which really is a two way shot here where he's hoping to get safe. Let's see if he takes our. A shot at it or if he plays it more like that other two way where he actually okay. wasn't really playing it oh. yeah he hit it good what oh my goodness yeah. if that didn't go I was going to be like uh, okay <laughs> Johnny's funny Johnny's he's awfully Johnny. talkative today Johnny's in pretty good spirits today Side pocket, so he'll yeah, just roll it up. I wonder if this will start the same way as the match yesterday with Johnny jumping out to the lead here. Looks like he's just got to make a somewhat difficult shot on the nine inside. Keep, keep in mind these pockets are tight, so he's going to have to hit this pretty good. Get there. He elected to go ahead and kind of hold it up with inside. He could have uh, gone around three rails that he wanted. Really, kind of a player's choice on that one, right? Yeah. What do you feel best with. Let's take a look at this angle here on this one, Jimmy. See, it's a pretty, pretty decent cut, but I don't really expect any problems on it. Got him again. Don't believe in that commentator curse. You, you need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop making predictions on the I guess ball. so. <laughs> well, if you remember yesterday, Johnny started with a really nice out. He came with some really good shots. Oh, he did. And yeah. kind of set the tone for the beginning stages of the match. And already in this rack, there's been a couple of mistakes from both players. Well, what was interesting was uh, yesterday along those lines but it is a race to 25 I mean it's such a long set that it's hard to draw any conclusions based off the first couple games but uh, you know they both came out of the gate swinging Johnny came out and made a great out to start with Oscar made some good outs but then along the way both of them started you know, hold on a sec Jimmy Oscar's going to kick this ball two rails He's looking at that's it. pretty gutsy you know, as I mentioned yesterday, I know Oscar has uh, played some billiards. He does have, he does have some, uh, you know, three cushion knowledge. He uses the rails really well. Um, yeah, I guess he's going to bank this ball now. He's kind of changing his mind a couple times here. I guess my point was, if he did elect some kick option, he, you know, he may feel more comfortable with a shot like that than some players just because like I said I know he has spent some time playing three cushion and uh... he's looking at the cut in the side how do you feel about that Jimmy I mean it's extreme but I think you know if you hit it perfect it's gonna go I mean that's what happens when you have a hard shot in the pool you look at it and you say does the there physics work so if the physics go. work you know you Guys, just hit it there, the right there was a, a nugget of wisdom right there if you hit it perfect it's gonna go <laughs> Hashtag Joey Ryan. Copyright <laughs> trademark. <laughs> Copyright. If you hit it perfect, it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my point is... <laughs> no, I know. I know. <laughs> my point is, sometimes people look at shots and they're like, oh, that's super hard. I can't make that. Well, the truth is, 
regardless of it's super hard, if the physics work, there's a way to make it. So just bear down and actually hit it that way and make it. Let's see. Does the physics work though? No, not that time. Look, he's gonna leave Johnny in an interesting Johnny, shot. Well, at least Johnny's shot is more makeable. Yeah. Johnny's and you can see from this this side view here that he's got plenty of room to make the ten and avoid the scratch. And if this first game's any indication, I think we're in for a, another seven plus hour race yeah, at 25 know, what, here. What I, what I started to say, well, let's see what happens on this ball and then I'll finish my thought. Well, I think you got time now, Jimmy. Johnny stood back up. Somebody's, somebody's uh, sitting right in Johnny's line of vision was kind of fiddling around. Nice, pretty nice hit on the balls again, but uh, came up dry. Anything controversial you guys hear on this stream? It's Ben Sutherland. I'd like to separate <laughs> myself and distance myself from controversy. So, uh, so he has a pretty nice little layout here. Um, he does have to get from the five to the six. The six goes in the side pocket, so uh, and the three is in good position in relation to the four. Or the I'm sorry. The only question is, does the five pass the seven? Yeah, I think that is the question, and it's, you know, it's with these four and eighth inch pockets, whenever you have a ball that you can tell from uh, the side view here, I'll show it in a second, that the seven is blocking some of the pocket. So with tight pockets, if it's blocking some of the pocket... Well, he's got an angle now to go two rails and get on the short side of the five ball. Yeah, you're right about that. Sure does. Hit this with some more left. Get into that corner kind of deep so he can come two rails for this spot. Oh, he over. Oh, did he? No, he didn't overhit it. Yeah, he, he hit, hit it good. well. In fact, he hit it perfect. He's on the. Only well, maybe not perfect. He, I thought it was going to come down a little bit further, but. I think he would have wanted to come a little short on it or a little far, but right where he is, he's kind of in a tough spot. Yeah, I think kind of he can follow this with inside and. I do think he can get down beyond. I think, I think if he can draw this with low left, I think that's the way he's going to go. Because if he follows two rails, he, he's coming in tighter and tighter into that six ball, and he needs a little bit of distance. Uh, Let's look at the other angle here, because I think looking at this other angle, he's got. I think he's got enough angle to you where. See what I'm saying if he were to follow, he's like coming in toward the six ball. Where if he if he's able to draw with some some. Uh, low left. Yeah. He's coming into a better position to get on the six in the side pocket. Well, we're going to find but out. He might not have that angle, so now he probably has to follow. Yeah, he could come into the eight ball here. Let's see. Yeah, I thought he could open up like that. And he got a little brush there, which helped him. Well, this is a little tricky because the point of a side pocket is like... It could potentially be obstructing his pass, rolling this down into the corner pocket and trying to follow down and clip, clip that side rail and get out for the seven in the same pocket. That the, the point in the side pocket might be in the way of where the, he needs the cue ball to hit. Yeah, you make a good point, Jimmy, because you know typically you can manipulate the cue ball and miss that point on a shot like this. But here, any fluctuation from just purely trying to pocket the ball can cause a lot of problems in these pockets. Yeah, you don't have a lot of wiggle room to like cheat the pocket to yeah. create an angle. Yeah. I think he's okay though if he just hits it with a smooth stroke top part of the ball, but he's gonna draw this. One thing good about the position of the seven ball is you really don't need to come too far off that long rail and you just 
could take a cut shot on that seven. So if he could pocket the six, and if he could avoid that side pocket, and it comes out by where the eight ball is, it's you know, for seven. Johnny Archer that's a makeable the seven. Camera, the, the seven ball looks like it's further away from the pocket, but it is. If you're looking right at the table, that seven ball is pretty close to the pocket, and he just how about that freaking Johnny Archer butt shot, boy. We got a little bit. <laughs> I'm in the booth, and I wanted to clap for that shot. But he, but you see, he had to hit it like that because that point, what that side pocket was naturally just rolling. It that side pocket was in the way of where he needed to hit the rail. So what he needed to do, he forced it to hit the rail before the side pocket, and yeah. he had to punch it that way. So that was a, it was a heck was of a, a shot. fantastic shot. You know, we've seen enough balls missed on these corner pockets to know you have to come correct, and uh, he had a great shot. Yeah, he, he really punched that six in the cue ball. I just watched it over here on the other monitor. The cue ball kind of popped a little bit, went up in the air. Oh, That's he, what allowed him to beat it. He's good here. He hit it like a guy who's won a bunch of world championships and, <laughs> <laughs> and US, U.S. Opens. Nicknamed after a pest. <laughs> See how Johnny breaks these balls. Did hit the, uh, he hit him pretty good compared to the way he was hitting him yesterday, but he got well, it. That is one thing yesterday, like, like we commented on a few times, he was mishitting the cue ball a lot on the break. Um, but uh, just even watching him practice before this match earlier today, I noticed he was hitting the cue ball better on the break. He probably, he probably was doing that because of this after his match here, I guess he robbed some sucker out of some money last night. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Just kidding. No, we're kidding. He uh, he and Ben played some last night. Now he laid down a nice little safety there, a nice little touchy safety. Yeah, that was a nice shot. And then, in, in all honesty. Uh, he did play some with Ben Sutherland last night. Uh, ben, who's really putting on the stream, BBTV. And BB is Benny Breaks, and Ben does have a really powerful break. And, you know, he picked up on a few things yesterday watching Johnny, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, just made a couple observations there. And, Johnny might be implementing some of those things today. Well, I assumed that jump cue was coming out. Yeah. Oscar's so proficient with the jump cue that he's pretty tough to pretty tough to hook. That's one thing that's definitely gotten better in the last, even just decade, is the uh, jump cue technology. And players' proficiency with the jump cues. Yeah. Well, you know, years ago, I was in Georgia for a tournament, and I ran into, Lo uh, I think it's Steve Lomax. And at the time, he had one of the better jump cues around, and I bought one. And it really changed my game, because I was able to get to so much more. Look at this shot. Boy. Beautiful gonna overrun it a little bit but just that avoiding that seven ball I don't know I, I, I think he's probably gonna play safe here just kind of roll the cue past the ten use the nine to kind of stop the cue ball there what do you think Jimmy yeah he could just roll up on those balls like that he could I mean the angle is there to just roll the two ball to the side rail and snug up on the 10 ball and 9 ball, but uh, I don't know. he may be looking for something offensive. Hey folks watching on Facebook, this will be the last complimentary rack that we're showing on Facebook, and then it pops over to the pay-per-view, but you can check out the pay-per-view. I think I posted a link in the 
in the comments earlier and today will be $20 only to purchase day two of this which you could get a bargain here because if it goes three sets you'll get two races of 25 so um, pretty good bargain okay he went a different route there and yeah, I think he, he left, left an edge sticking he out left a little piece but uh... You know, he is pretty limited in what he can do with this because he can only hit so much of that two ball. This might be one of those scenarios we talked about yesterday, Jimmy, where you know sometimes you're just in a spot where the only thing you can do is get aggressive and try something. And looks like Oscar's going to play the billiard here on the four ball on the side. Uh, I kind of like playing the combo with a nine on the side because even though it's a pretty extreme cut. You know what I mean? I think if you if you cut this ball correctly, you can contact the nine. You have a pretty good chance of making the nine. But let's see. I think he's playing the billiard. Wow! He almost made that. Really good, and he got safe. Well, I think Johnny can see an edge here. Right? I mean, doesn't look like it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe no. he can see an edge. An edge. Yeah, I think he got. I think. Wow, it's close, but I think he can well, see the edge of the two ball. He might be going rail first, that's what he was... Yeah, he did just look at that, didn't he? He might be going rail first with, with inside English. From here, where I'm sitting, it looks like he's... He is hooked. You know, these guys are struggling on this two ball here. It kind of reminds me of the podcast I did with Carl Boys, where I dogged the two ball straight in the rail. <laughs> You know, I've been here. You guys haven't seen that been, one. You got to check it out. Carl, it. every other day, Carl sends me a Facebook message with a picture of a two ball. But uh, I in all serious, in I all serious, seen it, but I have heard about it. Even oh, just yeah, right this brutal. morning in the parking lot. I'm gonna delete it. But uh, if you guys haven't checked out Carl's face or Carl's uh, YouTube page, YouTube uh, channel, check it out. Carl Boys, very creative name. <laughs> but he's got some great like six six minute or so instructional videos yeah some random transient guy in the parking lot just came up to us and said two ball when we were getting out of the car i don't know what that was about <laughs> i didn't know what that was about now i get it it's legendary it's not not quite the way i wanted to be famous but hey they're, they're never gonna let that go joey <laughs> nobody is you can delete it all you want from youtube it's out there oh it's funny <laughs> right. oscar's got a really nice angle here on this ball Follow this with a little inside English to get down for the five here. The uh, the ten ball actually helped a little bit there, making sure he got some angle. Yeah, because he's got kind of has a perfect uh, two rail position shot here to come out for the uh, yeah. six ball on that top right. He's going to come up a little short, or shorter than he wanted to be anyway, necessarily too short. Now the seven ball does look like it passes. I'm looking at the table. Um, it's close. I'm almost right down the line of this shot. It is close, but it does look like there's enough room to squeeze through there. Yeah. He got exactly where he needs to be for this kind of shot, where you don't have much room. You want to be, you want to be dead straight in, or at least where you can really see that that angle well. Yeah, he had a good. If it could have been a disaster if he would have brushed the seven, <laughs> nudged it out a little further from the rail, but it actually worked out perfect. No, oh, he missed it though. He yeah. needed to, Looked like he, he decelerated a little bit on that shot, yeah. just really trying to feel it in. Well, and you could tell as soon as he hit it that it wasn't on the line in because he needed to favor the inside of the pocket, and he actually hit it more toward the outside of the pocket. I have to say Johnny looks a little more comfortable in the early going here. He does, yeah. Ooh, that a one. A little bit far. Yeah. Okay, well, he came a lot 
out of that far. Now he's going to go ahead and have to set this in and go back and forth. We saw that a lot yesterday too, Jimmy, where guys were, these two guys were overrunning position. I would say a little more than they were coming up short. <clears throat> yeah, I would agree with that. The table's pretty quick, I think. Well, well early on here now we've seen some balls missed late in the rack. Uh, I suspect at worst, at worst, uh, Oscar can go to the bottom rail and spin this in. I don't think he can shoot straight at it. I think he may have to go to the bottom rail first. Yeah, he's probably going to, if he shoots this, if he doesn't just purely kick at this ball, he's going to have to put a little curveball or slider on it. See, he's not really jacking up, so no, he doesn't need to too the much. Rail and spin it in. Nice shot. Well done. Oh, that was that was a big mistake by Johnny because he certainly was in line to get out and kind of overran shape on that nine ball, and it cost. Well, he was him. perfect on the eight. Oscar was uh, hitting the cue ball a little bit. Yeah, he really had that extra high English on that. And uh, he also broke dry there. I'm, I'll use the famous Keith McCready line from when they first came out with that uh, with that measle ball. Everybody was kind of laughing about it. And Keith missed some ball against Buddy, and he says, I must have hit the wrong polka dot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Keith so much. What a character. Mm. I was fortunate when I lived in D.C. that I got to play against Keith probably a couple times a week in different local tournaments. And it was always an adventure, you know. The guy played great, and it's just so much fun. Johnny's going to jump these balls. This should be an interesting shot. He's checked up awfully high, but he did need to get clear a lot of distance and then get the ball down quickly so he made a made a nice hit nice jump and uh but he didn't get rewarded for it yeah this is one of these where the two to the three you get like oscar shooting this left handed but he's really got to focus on getting good on the two here see now he's he's on the wrong side of the two where he's got to come down into traffic you know, I'm not sure if he just mishit that because he was shooting opposite-handed or if he was trying to get nudge the three, nudge by, the three the up by the side pocket. That was creative. He might be able to draw off the five ball here, like so. He didn't get it to come back quite as he was hoping. Very steep on this three ball, but I think he'll probably play safe here. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of a that was kind of a two way there. Not kind of a, it was. I'm assuming he called it right. I looked I looked aside for a second. Yeah. Hello. Hey Oscar. <laughs> Oscar popped into the booth and said hi. <laughs> uh. I, tell you, I don't know about you, Jimmy, but, you know, it's, I love doing these, but it is a commitment, right? You're away from your family for a weekend. We had to drive up here. But when I heard it was these two guys, it kind of made it a lot easier of a decision, you know, just because of the way they are and how friendly and nice, you know. You know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, and I'm not the only one. I think all of us from Southern California say the same thing. I, I mean, I've known Oscar since he was, like, toddling around. Uh, you know, I told the story yesterday when Ernesto used to come and do the tables at hard times. He'd have his kids in there, and Oscar was the baby. I mean, he was probably four years old, three years old, and uh, he'd have the kids in there helping him, helping yeah. his dad with the tools and everything. That's and, pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> now to see him out here carrying on the Dominguez legacy. As most everybody probably knows, his father, Ernesto, is an extremely accomplished player himself. Great, great player from Southern California. Um, Did you play him much, Jimmy, when you lived out there? Oh, yeah. A ton of times. 
He's a great player. One of my one of my favorite, you know, kind of players that I looked up to as a kid growing up. Um, both on and off the table. He's an extreme gentleman, just like his son Oscar, really. You know, when you uh, <clears throat> when you get to know Oscar and talk with him a little bit, and then you see his dad out and about, you want to just go up and congratulate him and say, <laughs> you know, great job. You know, you did a great job as a dad, me as a dad. You know, it's really important to me when somebody tells me, like, hey, uh, your son was, you know, well-behaved at my house, you know, something like that. It's, wow, thanks. You know, I really appreciate that. And I just can imagine over the years so many people telling Ernesto what a great job he did with Oscar because he is just a total class act. Yeah. So Johnny, Johnny just came up with a nice shot there. He didn't have much room at all, and he was at an angle that makes the oh. side pocket even smaller. That was beautiful, actually. Uh, he'd like to, to shoot this five ball, swing around two rails, and get to right about where he is right now. We talked about that yesterday. It's so it's so uh, common that that happens. That the next ball you want to shoot, you'd like to have the cue ball exactly where it is. So he may kind like of a, to hit this with a little inside rather than going two rails. No, he went two. Okay. He again overran it a little bit. Yeah, he did overrun it. And that, as you were saying earlier, that uh, the tendency has been so far with both of these players to to overrun balls a little rather than underrun them. Yeah, I expect him to uh, probably cross this six and try to get him in there behind the ten. There's a couple options here to duck, but he will be ducking. Kind of like this. He didn't quite get there. He didn't quite get there, and I, I, I think can, Oscar can make this combo. He's got to cut can, the six. I can hear a comment that Oscar's making right now, and actually, I've thought this myself a number of times when I've watched these guys uh, hit balls. Uh, I heard Oscar saying that um, when he's putting English on the ball, it's not it's not taking the English. And, yeah, he's uh, saying his tip's too flat. He's well, got a Willard's, and he's he's creating a big pile of dust here. <laughs> He's, whittle, <laughs> he's whittling his shaft down? Yeah. <laughs> or his uh, tip. <laughs> well, it could just be him and his tip, but I've noticed that on a few shots with both these players when they hit some side English off the rail that, that it, it doesn't look like there's as much side English coming off the rail. Like they, they, The rails aren't taking the English. And it could be that the, the cloth is still fairly new. I mean, I know they've been... Almost they've, like the slide effect you get when you Yeah, cloth. I mean, it's possible. Because I, I have noticed that on a, on a few shots with both players. The delay here is Oscar really, I mean, he is going to work on this tip. I mean, I'm ready to give him one of my cues to uh, work on the tip. He's putting so much effort into this. But he's, he's going to make sure that he's getting the proper amount of English on the ball, what he's accustomed to. And it's kind of funny because he played all day yesterday. He hasn't changed equipment. But it's just he happened to notice. He happened to notice that his tip was kind of flat, and he wasn't getting the English that he wanted on his shots. So now we need a, a vacuum, a cleanup on aisle yeah, three. Yeah, we do. We got, we got like a two-inch pile of dust here from his tip because he was just sawing away at it. Right, he calls the eight ball. I'm about ready to get the uh, barista into action here. I think I need my coffee for the morning. I wonder if Ben can hook that up for us. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's anyone around here. Is there anyone sitting near us that could have some influence around here to get us a cup of coffee? Nice. Man, he hit that perfect, didn't he? And, uh, well, it's a perfect one for now. And you know what's funny is after after seven hours last night, and as long as we've been here today, for a brief second, I still was looking at the at the nine ball as the next ball he needed to get to off the seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, anybody watching, the black and yellow striped ball that you see at the bottom is the nine ball. The ten ball is what probably looks like the two ball or the eight ball to you right now. Hey guys, I know uh, I know this is pay-per-view. We really appreciate the support. Just want to let you know, 
if uh, if you have it in your heart to donate to the commentators, it's uh, the the PayPal link is up there. It's Joey Ryan at Pulsing365.com, and uh, we'll chop those up when we're done with Jimmy and I, and we do appreciate it. So Oscar takes a three to one lead. So I gave that nice shout out to Carl Boys' uh, YouTube channel and then he just messaged me and he said he'll be in in 10 minutes watching the match. So I told him, too late, I already shouted you out. <laughs> Seriously guys, check it out, it's pretty fun. He's a great pull person. I messaged you with a picture of a two ball. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's coming soon. Did you Here's say it. He said what? He's coming in. He's coming into the pay-per-view. Here's oh, an okay. interesting shot. Here he can kind of roll off the one ball and just touch the purple and just stick right in behind it like that. Nice shot. So, I thought I heard Johnny caught in the side. He did, so he's going to go ahead and kick at this with some speed. Yeah, I but isn't thinking, the isn't the nine in the way? Like, uh, it looks like it's in the mid way to me, but. Man, he hit it pretty good though, didn't he? He did hit it good. But he did just open up the pocket now so that the bank is available if, if uh, Oscar chose to take it. And the two's kind of hanging close enough to the hole. Oscar could try to bank this ball and draw the cue ball back. Yeah, he can, he can bank it with some degree of safety here. He went forward though. And he looks like he's close to getting safe. No, I think he left a peak. A yeah. it's, it's a long shot, but the good thing is it's a you know long tester tester shot, but the good thing is is the two balls hanging in the hole, so Or maybe it's not, maybe it's it's you know, on the on the screen it looks like it's hanging right in the hole, but I think it's kind of on the rail there, so he does have to at least get Yeah, you need to get out far enough to where you can't just make that two ball from anywhere. You gotta have a little bit of a Oh, please. Oh, you take this one. Thank you. No cream, though. <laughs> 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 that just got us some coffee. Nothing to stir the condiments with, though. Okay, it's going to go up. Got to go up to this top rail and back down, but again, just a little too much speed. Actually, a lot too much speed. Hook himself. Oscar's gonna jump this. He's gonna go for the bank. And that's that is what he called. He's calling a cross side. Guys, we're here at Griff's Las Vegas, uh, fabulous pool room, and these cameras—they really have these cameras installed here. I think they do a great job. The cameras are nice and clear. It's got the two really good camera angles that you can see here and uh, this is not the last of the action that they're going to be bringing to you at Griff's they can't they can't spill the beans yet but they got some other stuff brewing that should be some really good action matches so make sure to follow BBTV because that's what they'll they have, be streaming on they have Joey Ryan and Carl Boys coming up <laughs> <laughs> hey I had a match this morning I don't know if you saw it Jimmy oh, I saw it. but I played little Jin the junior player yeah. Yeah. So we didn't determine this until. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you in a minute. That Johnny would makes a good game with you and Carl. Boys played nine ball, but you take the two ball out, so you go one, <laughs> three, four, five, and then you go up to the ten ball. You know, I challenged Carl. <laughs> I told him, I said, let's play a, uh, let's play a virtual ghost match, because I have an eight foot table. He has, I believe, a nine foot table, and I thought that would be a pretty good equalizer. Plus, he hasn't played pool in four years. But uh, we couldn't quite get there. Couldn't settle on the terms. So Johnny got dead straight in, but he's good. Yeah, Johnny's in good shape here. He did... Uh, well, he's at an angle now. He's just going to have to follow forward to that uh, left-hand side cushion. In the back. Oh, he went ahead. He oh, stunned oh, it. You know what? I'm sorry. I was looking at the... I did what I just told everybody a minute ago. I was looking at the nine ball next so difficult even for me sitting here it's going to take a while like you know maybe another two or three of these matches 
<laughs> and I'll finally get this Aramith Black set figured out. You know, actually, when you're standing at the table, though. So that's March 19th through the 21st, Griff's Las Vegas, March Madness. Johnny hit a pretty good break he there. Pretty good break. So he, he uh, the cue ball released on him and rolled back some, um, but I, you can see already that he's made he's made an adjustment from how he was breaking yesterday. Because yesterday he was uh, he was really losing the cue ball forward pretty much every single time he broke. I mean he might have had two or three breaks in there where he didn't really lose it forward. Yeah. But, uh, so you can see he's made that adjustment and he's he's getting more energy into the rack as well. I see him playing this one ball down table and trying to slide behind a three ball here, I think. If he plays it over towards the ten ball, kind of hold that one ball down there and he can just slide his cue ball right over a little bit more. He didn't get there, he came up short. Yeah, and he's actually going to leave a... He left it in front of the hole. So Carl just joined the uh, stream after all that talk we did, thinking he was in here. <laughs> we had a great time, Carl, talking about the two-ball men. But uh, welcome to the uh, pay-per-view. Thank you. I told Joey that uh, you and he ought to have a match where you play nine-ball, but you take the two-ball out of the rack, so you go up to the ten-ball. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a chance. Then. You should go one, three, five. Or one, three, four, five. Yeah, that was a surprising uh, miss there by Oscar. Pretty easy one-ball to get started. Now he's left Johnny a good opportunity here. You know, I don't know how much to attribute to the table. You know, both players have missed some balls. And, you know, missed some balls yesterday, missed some balls today. Uh, I don't know how much to attribute that to the table. As, you know, maybe maybe the guys are just just off right now. You know, they they have had some off moments. I mean, both players have also had some on moments where they. But uh, if it can be attributed to the table, I, you know, I, I really, and I know I, I noticed, said this yesterday, and I'm just going to use this to get on my soapbox for just one quick second. I don't know that I'm a fan of, of four and eighth inch pockets. I'm really not. I, I just, I know that the, the idea is to, you know, keep you honest and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But uh, I've never seen, you know, I never won the U.S. Open because it was on four and a half inch pockets. For some reason, you know, <laughs> and Earl and Johnny and everybody still won. You know, and somehow yeah. Shane, Shane keeps winning now. Uh, I, I just don't. So anyway, long story short, I'm, I'm going to quit now because uh, something just happened here that I want to divert our attention to, and that is Johnny came up really short and he hooked himself on the four ball. Yeah, I mean, he had a shot, a standard shot on the side where you come three rails right to the center of the table. And, you know, that's something that I'm sure he practices a lot. Everybody should practice trying to leave the cube on the center of the table because it comes up so often. And he just came up very, very short on that shot. And now he's kind of stuck here. And, uh, you know, but to your point, Jimmy, uh, I'm not going to dive into the tight pockets. Uh, but I kind of agree for spectators it makes it tough you know when you see professionals missing really difficult shots uh, or shots on really tight pockets I should say routine shots on tight pockets but uh, what I will say is I spoke to Oscar before the match today and I just asked him how did you think yesterday went how are you feeling and he said you know I really feel like I'm playing some of the best pool in my life lately but the problem is I haven't been in the heat I haven't been in competition and it's one thing to do that just when you're beating balls around by yourself it's a completely different thing that you cannot simulate by yourself when you're in a match like this and he he felt like yesterday he didn't it wasn't anything mechanical it was just nerves you know just which is kind of cool when you hear a player admit to that because <laughs> a lot of times they don't admit to that but Oscar was like no I just got nervous on a few shots that because I hadn't been in the heat of battle, that's what happened. So. It looks like he really wants to power a draw here, but I don't know. I might just stun this ball and go forward a couple inches, shoot the seven in the corner. But I think he, he showed a preference yesterday for wanting to 
play balls in the side pocket when he had the opportunity. So he might be trying to come back to play the seven on the side. What do you think? So he's looking at shooting the seven in the corner. He just wants to make sure he doesn't get himself jacked up over the ten. So he's just looking at, you know, kind of how far back he needs to come to make sure he doesn't. Oh, and then look at this. It hit the spot. It hit the spot, and it killed the momentum. Yeah, that's exactly what he didn't want. All right, guys, we are ready to start the tournament. It hit. It did. Did you see that? It hit a little corner of the spot. Yeah. And. Uh, that prevented the cue ball from rolling any further forward. You know, I got a new diamond at the house, brand new cloth, you know, and I've had it for about a month. And I already have little divots like that. I mean, it's just unavoidable. You know, it's just a part of the game. There's uh, somebody talking over the, uh, over the uh, intercom. He may be. <laughs> yeah, he that missed that by a lot. That was a unfortunate. He got a double unfortunate. That was double. That was uh, unfortunate that he ended up hitting the spot like that. That happened. I'm sure that. Uh, at, Okay. Yeah, they're, they're doing tournament announcements here, and it's a little distracting. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's <laughs> While you guys probably don't hear it because Ben does a good job of tuning out the background noise, we're hearing it like really loud in our ears. Good out by Johnny. Let's see if Johnny gets a good pop here on this break. You know, he came up dry. He left the shot on the one. Carl, I guess he didn't watch your uh, 10 ball break video on the Carl Boys YouTube channel. He would have been able to pocket a ball there, I think. This two ball is in a really rough position, and uh, I'm not sure. He may be able to pocket the two ball off the six in the side. Looks like the players are taking a short break, but while they do, I'm going to show you this other view here and get your thoughts on it, Jimmy. What do you think about that? Can he roll up and then pocket the two uh, off the six in the side? How do you feel? I think he could. <laughs> Got somebody looking in. Yeah, for you guys at home, we have a soundproof booth here that that Benny Brakes built, and it's got uh, all this soundproof material, and it's got these glass like windows that we can look out of, and so we can watch it on a monitor, or we can look through the window and watch the match. Yeah, I moved I moved this monitor out of the way so I can see the table better. Um, yeah. To answer your question, I don't know on the two ball. Honestly, it's hard to tell. I mean, look at looking on the monitor, it looks like that shot may be available. But then when you look at the table, man, he would he would need to get awfully good on it. Um, yeah. And then I think it would need to be hit with some speed because if you hit it soft, I think it's just gonna. Well, one thing's for sure. If it does go, it's gonna go towards that bottom side of the side pocket, kind of off that point and in. Um, if the two ball were another three, two, three inches out from the rail, it's a no-brainer. Exactly. It's just where where it is. It's it's a little bit closer to the rail, I think, than it looks like on the monitor. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the the bank shot on the two is an option as well. If you could bring the cue ball out and try to leave a nice straight-in bank on the two and just kill the cue ball for the three, but we'll see. All right, back to the action. Oscar just got back from the bathroom. He took a good look at this two ball. I think he is going to play the two off the six. Well, he is looking at that, so obviously yeah. it does go. Guys, I uh, just want to give a shout out. You saw a couple ads that we ran during the break. Uh, Mike Gwynn from Realty One, always supporting the pool community. If you're looking for property in Arizona, buy or sell, or really nice shot anywhere in the country, 
Mike is your go-to. He can get you connected and refer you to one of his uh, friends in his network and, and find you somebody to get you a nice property. Also, we had Adam Kroll with Big Time Threads. Uh, Big Time Threads always supporting the pool community. If you need your team shirts or your gear, give Adam a shout. And CSI Pool Leagues with uh, Ozzy Reynolds. CSI does a great job with their leagues, their tournaments. Uh, so check them out. And Amy King. You see some frustration out of Oscar there, just kind of hitting his cue down on the table a little bit. Yeah, just a nice simple come off this one run long rail over here and then you got the floor ball right in the corner. So the trick here is going to be getting from the 5 to the 6 because the 10 ball is blocking the, uh, the lower right hand corner pocket. Yeah. Which angle are they looking at? They're looking at this angle? Oh yeah, I should switch it. Give you guys the other view in a sec. That's actually not bad. I'm going to keep it on that angle. Sorry guys, I was talking about the lower right hand corner pocket, but realized that you guys are looking at a different angle, so. Looks like he's gonna draw back between the nine and the six. Oh no, he was able to kinda yeah, perfect. swerve it over a little. Hey guys, we run up the 17 teams today. No real issues here. The nine goes in both of the bottom two corners. So Johnny just wants to. I think he'd like to just get to the middle of the table where he could uh, play the eight in the corner pocket and draw off that side rail so he's coming straight, straight into the position on the ten. I mean, on the just nine, like rather. that. Just like that. I don't think he'll use a rail here, though. He might. Yeah, he did. I think it, you like coming off the rail like that rather than because it gives you a you're coming into the angle that you want to be on versus trying to draw into perfect position with speed control. That's true. Plus with the stun like that you get real confident in how you're gonna hit the ball. You can hit it exactly where you want rather than feeling it. Right. Uh, my wife and we started going to pool matches. Well she's used to going to other sporting events where it's appropriate to be loud and rowdy and so I had that moment of kind of coaching her. You know, like, uh -huh. hey, you have to be quiet. But uh, when you bring a fan who doesn't know anything about, or a spectator who doesn't know really anything about pool, kind of their natural instinct is to want to be a little talkative and cheer and, you know, be excited for it. And you kind of coach that out of them as a pool player. Like, hey, wait, you know, this is a, this is a pool match. You know, we can't talk, we can't do anything. And I think that's one thing that Matchroom has done an amazing job at is... You know, showing people you can have fun, and you know, sometimes it gets a little overboard, but it creates this fun environment for everybody. Look at this, he came four rails on this one. I don't so know. Get there, though. No. Perfect. Oh, okay, never mind. You know what? I'm looking at the balls and I confused the two and the ten here. Now he got perfect on that. From the angle that I'm sitting looking at the table, the way that the, the ten ball is sitting, all I see is the blue. I wonder, it looks like he might be playing the carom. No, he played the two. Okay, and he created a little angle there. Cheated that a little bit. He cheated as much as you can cheat these pockets. <clears throat> so the, obviously the four doesn't pass the eight, so he's going to have to draw over to the side rail and back out. Didn't really get there. He's gonna have to bank this ball. Oh, you see how he's up, very disappointed. He came up real short. And he's not really stroking the balls the way he typically does. Yeah, he was trying to get to the middle of the table to play the four ball in the same pocket, I believe. But I don't think he was. Table three, Burr and Kennedy. No. Nope. Well, Johnny's gonna have an option that he is not gonna pass up. No. He's straight in on the five. Yeah. Uh, six balls on the uh, 
headrail right there in front of them. So. Yeah, Johnny's in great shape here. I think he'll just come down between the nine and the eight here, Jimmy. Or? I kind of think he will because uh, that way he doesn't he doesn't flirt with the side pocket. If he's wanting to try to go with inside English, uh, the other route he's kind of flirting with the side pocket. I'll just roll this in and take the eight in the side here. Just like this. Well, it's looking like Johnny's going to take a five to three game lead here. The, uh, Oscar uh, conceded these last two balls, I think. You know, it's funny, the whole conceding balls thing, because it used to be so, so... Uh, commonplace to concede balls that you would sometimes see people get bent out of shape like if they have a straight in nine ball and the guy wouldn't con yeah. of course I'm talking about when they're playing nine ball <laughs> and the guy doesn't concede the nine ball he's looking back like what you're not going to give this to me yeah. so I actually I actually kind of like the fact that it's not so commonplace anymore simply for that for that reason you know, it's just kind of silly when people are expecting to get it now look at that now see Johnny yeah. did miss hit the, the one ball the well, a number of a tours, bit. Jimmy, went to uh, a penalty if you conceded a game. So oh, they used yeah, to play I on the planet like Pole that, yeah. Tour, and there was a penalty if you conceded a game where you had to give up another game, too. And I kind of liked it, you know, because, like, in this environment, these fans paid for these seats. They want to see the drama of the players shooting every ball, yeah. uh, for the most part, so... Or growing up as a kid at hard times watching like Keith play people and he'd be giving them multiple <laughs> balls. <laughs> Miss a ball and just rack them up. <laughs> Oscar had a nice shot there. Yeah, he got on the wrong side. I think he's gonna, okay. He's okay. He's gonna have to come up above the eight. And, uh, That's the 10. I think, can he roll into that? Oh, that is the 10. I apologize. I think he well, can roll into it. Roll into it. You're right. He may have that angle. There it is. I'm switching my, uh, like I'm looking at the table at one minute and I'm looking back on the monitor and looking at the table and sometimes the obvious eludes me. Switching between these angles. I'm kind of waiting to see if we get a different type of match today than we did yesterday. Yesterday was kind of like this, right? Johnny would go up by two, Oscar would tie it up, Oscar would go up by one, Johnny would tie it up. I'm kind of seeing if we get like a Tour de France yellow jersey where the guy's up by so much and will the guy, you know, chip into the deficit type of thing. Well, I think in a race to 25, you have a lot of time for, uh, for momentum swings. You know, yeah. typically you watch you know, tournament setting or something where they're playing a race to 11 or something. You know, there isn't really a lot of time for multiple momentum swings. And if there are, they're, they're small, you know. Uh, I want to ask Oscar later about his uh, tendency to play for a lot of these shots in the side. Because there again, he had an, an example where he could have come out and shoot seven ball in the corner, but he chose to come up and play it in the side. And it seems like he's opting for that nearly every time when, it, when he has a chance. And maybe it's just the fact that the corner pockets are just playing tough and he wants to try to shoot more balls on the side. What do you think, like on a shot like that that he just had, I think that uh, the margin for error is bigger. You know, yeah. if you get a real thin cut on, um, you know, let's say you come up and you overhit it by a foot, suddenly... The, you know, the difficulty level of not only the seven, but playing position becomes becomes significantly more difficult than, it, it, let's say, you overshot that by a foot in the side pocket. Yeah. Oh. So, of course, he dogs it. <laughs> it was great. Uh, Oscar put a nice hit on those balls. He got the nine in the corner. He's not going to get a shot on the one ball. Yeah, cue ball ends up down the wrong side of the table again. Yeah, he's going to end up with nothing. We saw him yesterday a couple times in situations like this push to a jump shot. 
He could roll up into the 10 and he's leave himself. Think he's going for the jump right. No, he's not. But he went back for another Q. I was thinking, is he going to grab that? Yeah, he's got quite a few Qs over he here, may, Jimmy. He may push to another jump. I don't think he has a window between the 4-7. Uh, you know, Jimmy, he has two playing Qs out, a break Q, a jump Q, and a butt that he uses as a different jump Q. So he'll screw that jump cue shaft okay, he's onto pushing, that other he's button. He's to a jump here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uses the 10 to hold it. Just like I called it. Guys, tip your commentators. <laughs> We're out here working hard for you. Tip your waitress. <laughs> Seriously, though, if you do have it in your heart to shoot a donation to Joey Ryan at PoolScene365.com, uh, that's Jimmy and I's gas money back home. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. So Johnny's now got the option. You see this a lot. You don't often see the incoming player take it on a shot like this. If it were a hanger, a little bit easier. I think Johnny's gonna take it just because he doesn't want to give it up to Oscar. And in fact, Johnny said something to that effect right now. Johnny said something to the effect of, I don't want to let you shoot it. I wonder what kind of jump cue that is. I was wondering, I was wondering that yesterday. He's got that, uh, texture of more like a hand shoe. Yeah, it's got a humongous shaft. That that's, looks like a freaking 16 millimeter or something. You see how big that shaft is? Yeah. <laughs> Look, he played it off the ball. <laughs> well, he did pocket the ball. He didn't leave himself a, a great neck shot, but certainly has some safety options here. Let's take a look at this alternative view here. Try to use these balls as a blocker, but he hit it a little too hard, and Oscar's going to have a shot at this one. Oscar popped up relatively quickly there. Uh, is this score right? Is it 5-5? Five, five? Oh, you're right, it's 5-4. Five, five, four. Four. Yeah. For some reason, I... I've been pretty on point with the score in this match. I know, you are pretty, pretty good at that. Look at this good, shot. It's a good thing you didn't leave the scoring responsibilities up to me, because we'd be all messed up. <laughs> that was a nice shot by That's Oscar. That's why you make the big bucks. Yeah. That He's got a, a little nice bit of a... Oscar. A little bit of a challenge here to get any kind of shape on the floor ball. He might... Is he going to... Maybe come off the six. He's just gonna yeah, he's position gonna. for a safety. I don't think we're gonna see him go for a carom here. I mean, he's. I think he's kind of. He's down. looking at it. I don't know that it's there. Yeah, it's not a great angle for it. It doesn't I think look. The five balls up too high for that. Four balls. So or the four balls are. I'll just play safe behind it. I think. Might see Johnny jump another one here. This is a risky one to jump if he were if he were to elect to jump it. This is one that's really easily you jump off the table. Yeah, you'd have to land right in the right place here, kind of. Yeah, he's kicking on the ball. This. I think he'll try to come in behind it two rails. Looks like he's planning for that now. He hits this on the right angle. It's well, going to send the four ball the side, up the table. He must be he must be going two rails if he's calling in the side pocket. So he's just looks like he's, he's coming in too steep to, on this. Well, he's playing two rails. He's playing to get safe. No, that's good. No, he did not get safe. Yeah, he has a full ball. You can see it. Number three, Mark and around the six, and he does. Nice little John shot. He's queuing up to follow this two rails. Three rails. Oh, 
he got that perfect. Yeah, he might have. If we're nitpicking, if he took the ball in hand, he'd probably give himself a little more angle. He might have to follow down to the bottom rail. He might have enough angle just to go to the side rail and back out, but he's definitely playing position for the seven on the side. Yeah, I'll roll down to the bottom rail here. Trying to stand a little closer based on the comment that somebody made, or maybe I'm just talking quiet. You are talking a little quiet, Jim. I, you know why I keep talking kind of quiet? Because I kind of, even though I guess I They have, can't hear us. Yeah, they we're can't good. hear us. I yeah. guess we're good. Now you're going to get the full effect of Jimmy oh, no, Mendoza. I'm screaming. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting shot. only a, a few feet away from the table, but we are behind a big plexiglass. Uh, it's a pretty nice enclosure that he built here. A lot of times when you stream here. Yeah, it's kind of like a... It's got the nice hinges. Oscar went for the extension here. Talked about that yesterday. One of those innovations that's really helped the players over the years. Somebody's asking what cue Johnny's using. Did we ever figure that out in the playing cue? We'll try to find that out. Yeah, I was asking him about his jump cue, actually. Uh, but it was kind of in passing when there were other people standing around, and I didn't really get a... Yeah, since we don't have the chat active, uh, and it's not just us, it's really the whole pay-per-view service, um, the chat's not functioning properly. So I'm kind of trying to also keep up with the traffic I see on Facebook in case people have questions or comments or any feedback, like any issues whatsoever. Some people have been messaging me, things like that. And uh, I'm just coming up on a few things that I think could be relevant. A little cut shot here for Johnny. Let's see. It's gonna be okay here. Yeah, I think he can, I think he can make a bridge. He might be partially obstructed, but no, nah, he's good. Wiggled that one in. And wiggled it in. It's good here, now he's though. perfect, yeah. He's got the uh, little stop shot, and he's got the six as a hanger on the side after the five. He may come back a couple inches. He'd like to be a little bit on top of that five ball, like that. so close to the pocket you do want to get on the right side of the seven but it's not a huge deal here nice shot oh, he's good i see johnny play he has one uh air pod in yeah that's what he had yesterday too i wonder if if that's listening to music or if he can keep track of his stocks while he's playing <laughs> stocks <laughs> You know, that's one controversy that, uh, I don't know, I just don't get, Jimmy. Like, if my if my opponent wants to wear headphones, I could care less. Yeah. But some too. people get really uptight about that. So Johnny's going to go to the extension. He came up a little bit long on this. So... Even if someone as tall as Johnny, you know, can use that extension to their benefit. I'm going to ask him afterward about that extension that he uses. I may be interested in something like that. All right, six to five. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Guys, check out the sponsors along the top, and uh, we thank them for all their support. You know, keep in mind, when you see these logos on streams, uh, people are paying money or product to get on there. Let's uh, patronize them. Let's uh, 
keep that, keep that in mind and if you're looking for a product or something in the pool industry take note of who's sponsoring the events because they're bringing this kind of action to you so Johnny has a good shot on a one ball that leads to position on the two ball uh, the three's down so the next ball after that is the four so and it's right there so these first few balls are just kind of stop 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 uh, the key will be getting good on the seven off the six I think I'll just draw back and shoot this four on the side here I think now his uh, thought process is more about the five ball than it is about the four ball. Well, he he got a little straight. He got a little straighter on the two ball than he wanted. He wanted a, a, a little bit more angle. To I wonder if he'll play the two off the nine. Ooh. I think here, if I'm him, I'm just going to try to play the combination five nine. Just kind of roll forward here because the five's naturally going to go down towards that corner pocket. I figured he would try five. to avoid the combination only because you got to play position on the five ball coming off of that combination. And yeah, but the six is a get total a hanger. Unpredictable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what he's done here. But with the six being a hanger, I mean, get from anywhere. I think he'll definitely try to get over to the. He'll hit this with some right hand English and get over to this. Uh, right hand side rail that way he can come along right along like we were talking about earlier he can come right along the angle uh, into the seven ball yeah, that was good speed too notice he's overrunning a lot of shape and on that one he had a really nice touch He's in a good position here. He, I don't see... He'll definitely put a little draw on it and try to play this in the side. I mean, yeah, he has a little bit of an angle. I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, he does have a little bit of an angle to where... Oh, no, he's going to go ahead and take it in the corner. Okay. He had a little more angle than it looked yeah, like. Yeah, he had a little more angle than... You know, I actually didn't look at the table. I looked at the monitor. And I was looking at this angle. Johnny's got a little pep in his step right now. He must have got some good stock news on his uh, on his iPod. Yeah. His, his, not iPod. So uh, pretty much a pool player's dream scenario. You come in here, you watch guys like John Mora and Dennis Ercolo and James Aranis and just all the top players in here matching up duking it out. Let's we'll see how Johnny breaks these balls. Uh, did get a couple balls there. Kind of the last two balls rolling. Ball in the corner and a ball on the side. Not your traditional 10 ball break where you get the two balls in the side pocket. And of course this cue ball is still down the bottom part of the table where he's not in great shape here. But I anticipate him Got a couple options here, but he's going to create some distance here with the one and the cue ball. Maybe get him behind the two ball there. And he overran it a little bit. So Oscar's got a shot here, and he's pretty happy to get back to the table. Down by two games. Remember, guys, if Johnny wins this race of 25, we go to a third race of 25. Uh, not tomorrow, today. So you get the bonus coverage here. And actually, that will lead into tomorrow. <laughs> Good shot. Must have put a nice stroke on that ball. Yeah. Nice shot. Well, now he's sitting pretty, pretty nice. Might have an awkward breach here with the position of the seven ball, but he should be able to 
he didn't really have to do much with the cue ball because of where the five is. See, he is reaching over that seven ball. Shot. Yesterday, uh, Johnny never led by more than two games. He, he several times, at least two or three times, he was uh, ahead by two games and could never really pull more than that. Uh, right now, this is his second time being ahead by two games. He was ahead five to three, and now he's ahead seven five. And it looks like uh, the trend's going to continue so far. that Johnny seems unable to pull more than two games ahead. Crushed him again, but nothing doing. He failed to pocket a ball, but he left Johnny hooked. I don't think Johnny can Johnny see a piece of it, maybe? I don't think so, right? Nah, maybe the edge. Okay, he must be able to see a piece of it. See more than we thought, huh? Yeah, you can see more than it, more than it looked like from here for sure. It's looking like Johnny's gonna have to come two rails out of this. Uh, well, from your guys' perspective, the lower left-hand corner pocket. It's coming a different look. Well, now now you change the camera angle, so out of this lower right-hand corner pocket, he's going to have to go two rails. He did call the side pocket. I don't know. I'm assuming he called the ten ball on the side or the nine ball on the side pocket. But the one ball doesn't have a path to it. A whole lot needs to happen for that to happen. I don't know. He's got to hit a lot of balls and then... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was kind of more of a just in case this happens. Yeah, I think Oscar might have a shot on this. He might be able to put a little bit of spin on this and swerve it if he even needs to. Yep, and he did. Take a look at this two ball here. It's, I mean, the the problem here. It's tight, but there's no future with the position of the three ball. So I kind of, kind of expect him to kind of bank the two ball and play safe here and slide the cue ball into the three. He didn't quite get there though. He did not get there. He's disappointed. Johnny might be able to, if he can get underneath the three ball here, swing around two rails and get underneath the three, it might go off the nine ball in the side pocket. 
playing for? I think he's playing for the center. Okay, he's got this right here. Yeah. I just happened to look up and see where I'm sitting. I just happened to look up and see this angle that, hey, wait a minute, that ball will go off the side. Now here... So this is going to be a pretty tough four ball here. Oh, you know what? This whole time I'm looking at the, the five, five ball again. We're two days into this, and I'm still making Come on, a mistake. Jimmy. We're two days into this, Get and I'm still yourself. mixing up the four and five. <laughs> I gotta apologize on that one, but it really is difficult, though, after <laughs> you've looked at you know certain colors of the balls for like 30 years, and then all of a sudden they have a purple five ball. Just set in your ways, Jimmy. I tell you, it's the wave of the future and change. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Oh, you think you have a purple four ball? We'll show you. We'll make the five ball purple. That's a nice little shot. Did he don't, come up far enough? I don't know if he came camera? up far enough. He did point to it, but I almost does not look like he's there. Oscar's walking around on the sidelines here to get a closer look, too. I think he said he's calling it. Yeah. I mean, he's got to hit this four razor thin with a lot of left hand spin, I think. Nice shot. Hit it nice. Obviously, he would have liked to have been a couple inches further. Uh, it would have been a significantly easier shot, but he made a difficult shot. Looks easy. And Ooh, he came he up really short on that. Yeah, he. If you take a look at this view, you'll see at least five or six inches short of where he wanted to be. Yeah, well, you know what? Just better. get down and make the ball, though. I mean, you're in good shape. Yeah. What he does have going for himself here is that the uh, seven is sitting by the hole, so he just really needs to buckle down and make the six ball. Not worry too much about position on the seven. Played into the seven there. I don't know that if that was intentional or not, but it worked out pretty good for him. It worked out. He's going for the extension, I think. Yeah, he's grabbing the extension. I can't tell from where I'm sitting. Is that that's the ten against the rail, right? Yes. Okay. I'm sitting right behind the balls and uh, the black side of the 10 is facing me. Johnny, so, Johnny's, so the eight and the 10 look exactly the same. Right Johnny's now. changed his mind here. He's going to go with the bridge, I think. Maybe. Really? It was just a little too far with the extension because he's got to get a little draw on this and bring it back for the eight ball. slid off the side of it. He didn't want to do that. Yeah, he did. It just makes it that much harder with the bridge, you know, and to your point earlier, with so many shots now where you can use the extension, you use the bridge even less. Yeah. And so... so unless you actually practice with it, you, <laughs> the only time you ever use it is in a situation where, where you need it in a game. There's so many things like that in pool, right? Where it's like they're annoying to practice. <laughs> like using the bridge... I find the break kind of annoying to practice. Good shot there. Johnny made a good shot. I'll go out to practice the break and say I'm going to do it for an hour and 10 minutes into it. I'm like starting to shoot balls out of the pocket. All right, so Johnny's going to go back up by two games. And uh, Just let me know the video, audio, if everything sounded good. I'd appreciate it. Johnny's definitely looking, looking for whatever. Oh, that was a pretty unfortunate kiss. Yeah. It just sometimes, you know, you try not to be uh, superstitious and believe in all that stuff. But, you know, sometimes it's weird, right? Two seems to be the number every time he gets up two games. Yeah. Even if he doesn't make a mistake, you know, unforced error, something something funny happens. It's almost like the pool gods just know. Oh, uh, well, you can believe that Johnny's sensing this in his, in his head, right? He's already thinking 
when he gets up two games. Okay, dude, finally, it's now my turn to get up three games. And, <laughs> you know, like sometimes you just get caught in that kind of rut and it just doesn't materialize for you. But uh, what I was saying is that Johnny seems more focused today. I don't know, maybe he just seems fresher. I, I don't know if it would just seem like, it just seemed like yesterday was a really long day, but uh, um, whether it was fatigue or for whatever reason, Johnny does seem more focused. And, and maybe yeah. it's just, a, like I said, maybe it's just he's fresher today. Well, you know, these guys both came into town, but Johnny had the time difference. Oscar didn't. You know, so each day that you're in a new time zone, you kind of get a little more acclimated. Wow. Um, well, good, good speed there. Oscar did hit it. Good speed. Hey, I want to take a second and thank Bob Hoisel. Hoisel? Hoisel? I always don't know how to say your name, Bob. Sorry, but really appreciate the uh, the PayPal donation for the commentating. Thank you so much. Be able to get an energy drink on the ride home now. Keep us awake. <laughs> we'll have to split it. But yeah. No, <laughs> no. Bob's very. Bob's been very generous. He he donates every single that time. That is true. He is. I mean, he's really consistent with that, and we appreciate it. That's why I feel like I know you, Bob, because I see your name like every single time I commentate. Thank you very much for always tuning in and for your donation. Of course, I always say it uh, when I'm doing it at home. I'm always saying it's not required, but certainly appreciated. Oscar's perfect here. Come just two rails on this one, slide down for the 10 ball, just like that. And just like you said, Jimmy, it's like not really much. <laughs> Oscar to break down eight to seven. And Oscar just this slowed one. down a great break. Yeah, he did. It's an excellent break. One ball is like literally a hanger in the hole. Not too much trouble getting on the two. Well, it's a little, uh, you know, he has to hit this with good speed control. Yeah. Because there isn't, like, a, a great route. He's looking like, at coming down. Into coming into the angle. Yeah, he's looking at coming down between the nine and the seven here. It's a little touchy. He's got to miss the four ball on the way down. That's the big thing. If he hits the four, he might get stuck behind the six. Like this. So he did hit the four, but he ended up okay. He hit the right side of the four, correct side of the four. You can just hit this with a little bit of outside English and uh, come off this bottom rail and straight back up for the four in the side, uh, the four in the side pocket. Yeah, in the right hand side pocket. Yeah, he's actually in perfect alignment here to run this table and tie the score at eight to eight. You know, I interviewed both of these guys on Pool Player Podcast. Jimmy, I don't know if you you know that Oscar was episode 12 and Johnny was episode 14. And one of the things I really enjoyed talking to Oscar about was the time that he spent in Asia, the uh, Philippines and, and China. And, you know, he was, you know, just talking about the level of play over there and really what that did to his game. The fact that he took a couple thousand dollars over there and he just knew he was going to lose, <laughs> but he knew it was it's almost like investing in lessons, you know. And uh, I believe it was Oscar that told me the story that he got there and he started playing this guy and he's telling his dad, ah, man, that's unfortunate. But he got there and, you know, they took a long time to get over to the Philippines and 
His dad's like, what do you want to rest? And Oscar's like, heck no, let's get out and gamble. <laughs> and so he gets to the pool room and he, they're trying to match him up with this guy. And so Oscar kind of figured that he was an underdog. Well, he gets in the match and, you know, he's late in the match and he's telling his dad, I think I can beat this guy, dad. And, you know, I think I got him. And uh, lo and behold, as he ties up the seven ball there just to make Johnny's life a little more challenging, uh, Oscar was ends up losing narrowly the first set then gets blown out the second set and finds out it's Carlo Beato <laughs> he had no idea right and so not long after that Shane came in and Shane played Carlo and so uh, but it was just fun listening to these stories you know it's it's kind of like somebody making a trek out to Las Vegas here and not realizing that they just played John Mora or you know one of the locals out here that are pros you know but over there you know, it's just kind of on another level wondering what he's thinking here. The way he set the ball down makes me think he may be... So I think he's going to go... So who won when Shane played him? Uh, Carlo. Oh, did he? Yeah. This was a little before Shane was the top player that he is now. He was kind of doing the same thing that Oscar was, you know, kind of over there getting seasoning. And Johnny's going to hit this with top and come off the long rail. And he didn't follow through. He kind of punched it a little, and it caused it to veer off to the side there. He may just bunt up on this. I don't see why he would try to hit it, hit it real hard. I mean, he, he could potentially go two rails and just barely clip it. That would be a good shot if he came up table. Yeah, if he came two rails and hit the top part of the seven. That's actually but a real good shot. This is probably the the only bad thing about this is that you're probably going to be in the position, you know, like this. Now Oscar's just going to thin this and go up table. That's the only... Yeah, thanks for the messages, guys. Uh, got some people asking about the equipment. Well, one thing we can tell you, Oscar's a Predator-sponsored player, and so he's using Predator equipment, and he uses the Revo 12.9. We were talking about this yesterday. John is taking a break. All right, guys, we're back to the action here. Johnny Archer's back. He's playing the ball in the side pocket. Really a two-way shot there. He just wanted to call that ball on the side just to be safe. like Oscar's going to thin the side of this. Try to get the cue ball up table. He hit it a little too thick and now he's actually sold out the seven ball on the side. It's a thin cut but definitely manageable here. Get a good view of that here. I think Johnny hit that one a little fatter than he expected, which caused the cue ball to lose a lot of momentum. I'll go back to this view, give you guys a better view of this. I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny got a little aggressive here. I mean, he could thin the right-hand side of the eight, try to bring the cue ball way up behind the nine ball, swinging around a couple rails. He could also try to bank this eight. I kind of like banking the eight down to the... Let's go back to this view here. Bank the eight to the bottom left corner. And kind of track the cue ball over toward the ten ball. If you miss the eight that way, it could come right up kind of near the nine. It'd cause a little situation there for Oscar. This is one of these where when you don't have a clear cut safe, sometimes it's better to just go for something offensive. 
Let's see what he elects to do here. Looks like he is lining up the bank shot. He's pulling out the protractor and calculating this angle here. Yeah, he missed it, but he ended up coming out safe on this one. Oscar can see the left side of the eight, so he could thin the eight, bring the cue ball way back down table. I think that's what he might try to do here. Welcome back, Jimmy. Thank you. He left me when they were on a break. I had nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I made it work, though. I even played in that. There's a, a, you know, it took a little while to navigate the crowd to get to the bathroom because they're running that bar table tournament right now, so it's kind of crowded over there. Oh, yeah? Oscar's taking a while on this one. We saw this a couple times yesterday where Oscar took a good minute or two looking at a few different shots before he actually pulled the trigger on something. That shot isn't in your arsenal practice it if you play a lot of rotation pull thinning those balls up table and bringing the cue ball back down comes up all the time yeah you see uh, those balls are so easy to especially when you really need to hit it thin like that they're so easy to miss the whole ball or, or hit it way too thick and sell straight out so yeah. those are uh, touchy shots that need to be worked on and you never think to practice that kind of stuff though most people don't yeah, while you were gone, uh, Johnny banked an eight ball and nearly made it. I saw. I, saw, I was yeah. sitting right there waiting to come over. And so now he's thirsty for more. He just called the eight ball in the bottom right-hand corner pocket. He's going to try to bank it to the other corner. He does go for this. I got a great angle. It's coming right at me. Now he's looking at the other corner pocket. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. You just miss one to that corner. You can't. <laughs> Gotta try the other one. Oh, he's thinking he's due now. <laughs> yeah, he's already now missed I'm due. one. He's due. Yeah. Yeah, he missed that one by more that time. Oscar's gonna have a shot here. Well, I'll tell you what, after hooking himself behind the nine ball, uh, Oscar's gotta be feeling pretty good to to be in a position to win this game. That was this game, wasn't it? We it was had this a break, game, yeah. We had a couple, yeah, that was. Needs it to slow down a little. He's good here. So if he can take care of these last two, we're knotted up at eight, tied again. You know, this is an interesting match to go back and look at lead changes and tie scores. You know what I mean? Because between yesterday and today, we had quite a few lead changes and quite a few tied scores. Why is he going forward here, Jimmy? He must not like the angle he has. It kind of looked like he could have drawn back. Either that or he just wanted to show off for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hot dogging in a little. He was like, I'm going to show that Joey Ryan. Yeah, I kind of surprised there. I thought he could have pulled back and got over close to the side pocket. Maybe he was concerned he might scratch. 
Unless you just gotta cinch this one. Pocket speed. Nice shot. But Johnny, I'm not sure what cue he's playing with. I would tell you that Johnny is not using a, what appears to be a low deflection shaft. Um, looks like he's using just a maple shaft. Not really uncommon for, you know, Johnny's generation to be someone who's not adapting to the carbon fiber. I released a podcast episode today with Ralph Suquet, Predator sponsor player. Uh, he uses a 314. Slightly modified from stock, but just can't get the feel of the carbon fiber. It's something with the texture. He's just not had a lot of success with it. And he was saying that, you know, it, perhaps if he used a glove, it would be different, but he doesn't use a glove. So. Well, Oscar took took that on. There was a lot of reward if you could have got it. It kind of backfired on him now. Johnny's in, Johnny's in great shape here. Ten are really tied up, uh, but the eight ball looks like it could be pocketed in the side pocket. Um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself just looking at where the the potential problems are. I mean, the one, two, one, two, four obviously is sitting right there. Uh, it does look like the eight ball can be pocketed in the side pocket. Yeah, it can. So apparently Oscar's butt is a panthera. Panthera? I don't even know how you... 2-2. Uh, two two. So that's interesting, though, about Ralph Sakai because he's using a 314, and they do have uh, now that Z3 that's wood and deflects, from my understanding, significantly less than the uh, 314. Different taper. I used the Z2 for years, but the uh, you know the Z shaft has that more sharper taper than the 314. Mm. I just think Ralph is more traditional. He likes the feel of the wood between his fingers, you know. Mm -hmm. So I do think Johnny wants to be kind of on top of the seven with, with an angle similar to, I mean, he'd like to be out a little bit from where he is, but he'd probably like to go, uh, be able to off of his seven ball, go to that left-hand side cushion and draw straight back down for the eight on the side, just like that. The only, the only thing he needs to be careful of is not putting too much draw on it to where he clip, clips the eight on the way down. Um, because he wants to come in fairly, sh he wants to come out of that pretty long off of that side cushion. But again, he doesn't want to come out so long that he clips the eight. So I was actually considering getting an angle where you could come the other way and come two rails, just so you didn't flirt with this nine ball. But Johnny hit it perfect, so he's in great shape. It's good. And it doesn't look like he can avoid bumping the ten, so he will end up just playing position just slightly off the 10. At least that's what it looks like from here. I think here. he can he may, avoid he it, may but be able to avoid it. he chose uh, not to avoid it. it. He had a nice shot. Kind of used the 10 to hold the cue ball there. Actually, it looks kind of nice, too, what he did, because he got it a little bit off the rail, too, so uh, it's a little bit easier ball to pocket yeah. if, if he happens to not get perfect on it. Uh, he hasn't been able to string together. We've yet to see a well, two-pack, I don't believe. Yeah, we haven't. And, I, and I, I do think that it's a combination of the plastic rack, just using the regular plastic triangle, as well as uh, not being able to, you know, use your finger to manipulate. Oh, you. you use your finger to manipulate the uh, balls once they're, the rack is off. So. Yeah, uh, those two two things 
certainly make for uh, you know tougher conditions to make a ball on the break. Yeah. We we mentioned this yesterday, but Johnny's break follow through is a little unorthodox compared to the good ten ball breakers of nowadays, where instead of following through down into the cloth, where, you, where actually, you know, if you have one of those good 10 ball breakers breaking over and over on your table, you're just going to get streaks going down the cloth from where their follow through goes. He's more somebody that follow throughs, his follow through goes upward. You know, I don't, I don't think that's so unorthodox for, for Johnny's generation. True. Because um, a lot of, a lot of the big breakers of that era the cue went up and there was a lot of body movement you know the like if if any of you um you know remember i mean obviously everybody remembers him who was around but tony ellen uh was probably the most uh extreme example of how much just body movement but you know johnny had a lot of body movement he stood straight up and his arm was way up in the air and out and even earl uh earl's arm went straight out over the over the table cue ball up in the air so I think a lot of the, the guys with the real big breaks of that era it wasn't uncommon to see that yeah that's true so Johnny pushed to here Oscar didn't even get out of his seat just gave it back and now Johnny's like why did I push to here because he's very confused about what to do he actually sat down on the booth here and just looked at it now he's getting back up So Johnny says, in the side, and Oscar said, the one or the three, and Johnny said, either one. <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't know which one he actually called. I hope Oscar does. Well, if he makes one, he'll tell us. Yeah. <laughs> he'll tell him. He'll be like, that's the one. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, out of uh, by percentage, Jimmy, how many tournaments would you say that Johnny Archer's played in his life where he went two and out by percentage? Well, I mean, not counting the time when he was a kid learning to play. Yeah, like once he became a professional. Jeez. Has to be like under five percent, right? One. Yeah, it has to be a single digit for sure. Yeah. Well, I was in one of the tournaments where he went to an out. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Should have got him to autograph a ball. I know, right? <laughs> I don't know if he would have been in the mood I for it. I have the same cue ball that Johnny went to and out with. Yeah. He signed his name in a frowny face. <laughs> but we were at a place called Bank Shots in Jacksonville, Florida. And they had a... I think it was one of Tony Crosby's events. And... Uh, it was kind of a crazy event because one of these where it starts at noon or something. So I, I just want to take notice real quick of look how close that cue ball is to the seven ball and he's whipping out the jump key. Now he doesn't have to jump a full ball obviously, but still. Yeah. Now it's going to sell out a shot there. So we're at this place bank shots and you know, the tournament's supposed to start at noon, I guess. And everybody knows Johnny's coming. He's on the player list. And so, you know, I'm excited to see him. Well, they call his first-round match, and he's playing a really good player from North Carolina, Keith Bennett. I don't know if you've heard that name. But Keith Bennett's excellent player and capable of beating anybody, really. And uh, Johnny rolls in, like, 40 minutes late. <laughs> you know, it's like forget about on the clock. It's Johnny Archer, you know. And uh, when he gets there, Keith's been hitting balls for that whole 40 minutes, and I mean he's looking great. And I didn't know Keith that well, so I was kind of watching him, thinking, man, this guy plays good. Well, Johnny gets ready to hit a rack of balls, and Keith's like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> and Johnny's like, what do you mean? And he's like, you don't get to come in 40 minutes late and hit a rack of balls, and wouldn't let him hit a rack of balls. Right? So he's a little perturbed, I think right off the bat. Well, anyway, Keith beats him and knocks him into the loser bracket. In that same tournament, Mike Davis 
had gotten upset in the first round. I don't remember who he got beat by. But Johnny ends up playing uh, Mike Davis in the first round of the loser side, right? The f yeah. And Mike beats him. And so Johnny showed up 40 minutes late, got knocked out, you know, two and out. And, it, I, you know, I remember thinking at the time, man, that doesn't happen very often, you know. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Johnny's got the jump cue with the... With the uh, broom handle sized shaft. Nice shot. Now, is he going to get a shot here? You know, I think, <laughs> I think he can pocket this four ball. It's not easy. Looks like you can see just enough. You can look out on the table, Jimmy. What's it look like? Close, right? It is, real tight. it is real tight, but I do think he can see enough to make it. Again, this is a pretty big game here if Johnny can get to 10 first. It's one of those milestones you try to get to in your race to 25. And he actually overcut that ball, so he had plenty of room to make it. He just didn't hit it great. You were taking a bite of food, Jimmy. He overcut that ball. Well... I'm sure he was Or concerned. undercut it. Sorry. He it undercut fat. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, then that, that answers the question of how much room he had. Yeah. He had plenty. This is going to leak out a little. Yeah, I'm surprised he played it like that because trying to get him behind that ball in the middle of the table with both the object ball and the cue ball is kind of tough. Well, he may be... He may be forced to go ahead and take a swing at this because it isn't like there's a fantastic safety option. Well, one safety he could do is he could hit it with a little bit of high right hand spin and bank it straight back up the table and have the cue ball track over to the long rail down into the seven ball. And then he could use the eight as a blocker. It's not a really difficult shot to execute. Maybe just straight top actually. You see that one? Yeah, I do. The only thing about that shot is that you're going to be banking the, uh, because you want it, you would have to hit it absolutely perfect to squeeze it back between the, the uh, 9 and 8 to get back up to the head rail. So you're probably going to bank it back up to the left of the 9 ball. And so you may be leaving it pretty close to that upper left-hand corner pocket uh, and leave a shot if you don't hook them. So it kind of makes me feel like, and he, and he is going for this. And he is... Okay, Oscar's in good shape here now. I think he can just spin this in with some left hand spin and come two rails. Bring the cue ball out between the 10 and the 6 and shoot the 6 in the opposite corner pocket here. Just like this. I'm going to duck to the side and take a couple bites of my salad here. Okay. Jimmy's taking a lot of breaks here. He's going to have to come out of his PayPal donations shot by Oscar. Wants to maintain a little angle here and he's got it. It's 
see, he came up a little far on this one, but he'll just spin this in with some inside English. Try to work back across the table. We just had a cell phone go off near the table and got Oscar's glare. He's taking a little extra time here to make sure he can regroup after that cell phone. I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but Oscar sure did. Very nice shot there. Sorry guys, I, I'm learning these advertisements. I had to cut that one off a little early. That was Mike Gwynn with Realty One, always supporting the pool community. Mike's an agent in Arizona but he can get you connected wherever you're looking to buy or sell property. He's got a network of realtors from throughout the country that he works with. So if you have any real estate needs, give Mike one a call. Guys, we're at 9-9 here. This is the second race to 25. Oscar won the first one. Got a dry break and Johnny comes to the table. A long look at the one ball. He's just gonna duck, put the cue ball on that top rail and use the three as a blocker. Give you a good look at this one. I think Oscar's looking for the one rail kick here. I think he called the one off the four, but more as a precaution. Oh, actually, I doubt. I do think he, yeah, you can make it. Yeah, left a shot here. Definitely not a not a gimme, but he did leave a shot. I don't know if you're sensing it, Jim, but it seems like, um, it just seems like Johnny has a little more confidence today. That's what I was saying earlier. He has a little, little more pep in his step, a little more focused. Um, and again, I, I'm not sure whether or not to attribute that to just he's fresher or... sure with a player that's accomplished as much as Johnny Archer, some days he just wakes up and says, I'm Johnny frickin' Archer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come out here and show people what, what this is all about. Well, that's interesting. It's gonna be on the 50-yard line here. Oh no, I was looking at the purple. I pulled one of your moves. I was looking at the purple next, and it's actually the pink. So he's uh, in good shape. He's just uh, got to draw off this ball. Got to stay down on this one, though. These corner pockets have spit out a bunch of low English shots, and he did get that one. Seems like when you got to power up with low English into these corners here, it's more susceptible to spit it back out at you. Well, if he rolls this forward with high English, I don't know if he has enough angle to where he's going to avoid the six, and he can, if he could roll past the six and maybe even bump to the, the ten, ten, yeah, then he'll be in perfect line. You see people miss this sometimes because they're so focused on bumping that ten. He hit it real nice.
ten ball is kind of obstructing where he would like to go naturally, because naturally I think he'd like to just draw to this uh, left-hand side cushion and draw up for the eight in the side, but the ten is obstructing that route, so interested to see where he goes here. He said, I'm not worried about that stinking ten ball, I'll just bump right into it. <laughs> into that one and he did he did lose it a little bit he didn't uh, he didn't hit the cue ball real squarely he hit it kind of high again which was actually what he was doing yesterday if you remember he was he was miss hitting the cue ball high one almost thing we, every time yeah one thing we haven't seen Jimmy is we haven't seen the guys uh, decrease the speed of the break which if they're getting a good rack uh, you know and they're getting a good pop which Oscar is Sometimes you'll see the players dial it back a little bit and it'll result in more of those second balls in the side pocket, but we haven't really seen that. It seems like it's almost like they're hitting it super hard every time and not really experimenting too much with speed. Look at this, Oscar had ball in hand and he came up pretty short on this ball. I mean, he does have a shot, but... Yeah, I think, I think he'll just make this ball. This is well, just one of these the you end. run it across and back. And go back and forth across the table. The speed, uh, if he's going to go back and forth one time like this, it's conducive to the pocket accepting it if he hits it pretty good, you know? So, I kind of like that shot. Kind of similar to yesterday where, you know, Oscar's kind of on the verge of playing really good pull at times, and then he'll make an uncharacteristic mistake. And we saw that all day yesterday until the end of the day when he didn't make a mistake in those last seven games. Put the extension on here again. forward here just gonna float down below this got a nice little angle here force that one forward Sitting really good now. Chance to tie it at 10 to 10. Oh, 
Okay, Oscar hit him good there. Is he gonna make a ball though? No, he's not. Well, he didn't give up a shot either. Well, I don't know. It looks he might like be able he... to go rail first. Yeah, I think he can rail first this one. Let's see if we can get a better look at it. Yeah, it looks like he can. Number five, Norma and Dell. He'd like to make this hitting the one as thin as possible so he can kind of come off this rail and get a little angle here on the two. Very nice. So now he can shoot this two and kind of just hit it with some left hand spin and work the cue ball back really towards that seven ball. Came up a little short, but I think he'll be okay. Yeah, he has a nice little path to go around three rails and Yeah, you just don't want to overhit this and get down behind the nine ball here. And you don't wanna oh wait, pink ball. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking purple ball again, sorry guys. Pink four ball. But I'm not the only one who's done it. Yeah, he's in great shape here. They go up 11 to 10. Yeah, everything's uh, from here kind of leads to to everything else. The only thing that doesn't lead naturally is the nine to the 10. And even then, with the 10 being where or the nine being where it is, he'll have a lot of options from there. Well, he's going to be fine here, but he didn't want to have to get up over this 10 ball. Looks like he can queue next to it though, so he's okay. Have to stretch a little. Yeah, so pull up the extension, maybe not. He was holding on to the very back of the queue. Yeah, and that didn't work out the way he wanted. Out the extension for this one. Now I believe he had pretty much the exact same shot yesterday, and I told you Johnny Archer's not going to miss this ten ball. <laughs> and sure enough, he Maybe missed he it. So I'm not going to predict it. Maybe I, I'm just short, and everything looks very nice. Everything looks. Well, that's the second time that Johnny has scratched on the brake in the side pocket in as many brakes. I think the last time he broke, he scratched the same exact way in the opposite side pocket. I think he's trying to lay into it a little bit. Probably a little bit of frustration from not... Uh, I don't know about frustration or just if he's trying to change something up with the brake thinking by putting more into it he might get a little bit more productive off the brake uh, neither player really doing anything uh, you know off the brake nobody's running a lot of racks and many racks at all um, I think it's I know I keep saying it but for anybody just tuning in I think the combination of <clears throat> not using a template rack in addition to the rule of not being able to manipulate the balls with your finger at all outside of the rack you know some people will rack the balls and then they'll kind of use their finger to kind of push on the one or whatever to get the kind of snug the balls up however they want them snugged up and uh, they're not allowed to do that and so I think a combination of those couple things and the pockets being pretty tight um, is making for not a lot of productivity off the break but anyway Back to the action here. Yeah, Oscar overhit that two ball and got bad out of a three. Um, missed that tough cut. Trying to hold the cue ball up for the four and decide. I don't believe the three ball passes the eight. 
I could be wrong, maybe it does. He might have a little piece of that. He's looking at it, unless he's gonna play the combination. It's hard for me to tell sitting here. I think it's the combination. Katie Scott came walking by and uh, said hi real quick, so. All right, well, uh, Johnny did play the combination, obviously. Lefty A hanging, and uh, Oscar's a little bit fortunate to be back at the table after missing that three ball. Obviously the uh, balls are a lot less predictable when you're not using the template rack. I think that's... Also playing into uh, how this is going with the, uh, with the break. Oscar laid down a pretty good safety there. Johnny's going for his jump cue. I really am interested to know what kind of jump cue this is. Oscar shot, although I think Johnny's going to be snugged up to this eight ball on his next shot. He did, he did call the one ball in the upper right hand corner pocket.
if they take another break, I, I might go ahead and try to ask Johnny what he's playing with, what his cue is, what that extension is, what the jump cue is, because I'm assuming there are those on the feed who are interested to know that information, and I'm kind of interested to know it myself, especially the jump cue. Well, Johnny made a good hit, but he did give up a shot. Oscar may need to hit this with some inside English and try to spin around spin around that 7-8 uh, and come back between the 8 and 4 uh, off of that third rail. Just like this, he just under hit it a little bit. He called the bank. Three. He'll just roll forward for the four in the opposite side pocket. So he'll roll this three ball forward, shoot the four in the right hand side pocket. The four ball does go on the opposite side uh, if he gets in a position where he needs to play for that shot. Oscar's down on the ball, and Joey's over here throwing keyboards around. <laughs> I know you guys probably couldn't hear, but probably when Oscar was down on the ball, a keyboard fell off the... I'm eating, sorry. <laughs> Oscar does have the angle where it looks like he's going to elevate it just a little bit, just enough to slide that cue ball. Oh, maybe he's not. Okay, maybe he can, has an angle where he can just roll forward. No, he way overhit it and uh, wasn't happy about it. I suspect he will see. Oh, okay, thank you. He's going to, uh, he called the cross side bank, so he is going for the bank here. <laughs> this is definitely a tricky position to play from here. Looks like he may be just trying to get back out kind of to the middle-ish of the table and take a cut on that 7 ball in the lower left-hand corner pocket. Pretty limited on what he could do with the cue ball from where he was. Well, 
Oscar just grinded his way through that, that rack. Got out of line a couple times and worked it out, banked his way out of it. Early on he had to bank a two ball, then he ended up having to bank uh, Broke the balls real nice, controlled the cue ball real nice, but came up empty. Uh, I can't tell from here, both on the monitor or by looking at the table where I am, I do not believe that the uh, five ball passes the nine ball in the lower left hand corner pocket. So right off the bat, I see that as an issue. necessarily an issue but just obviously a, a shot where you'll have to uh, do a, a little something to make it work could get the angle that he has now on the floor ball. Roughly, I think he can swing around two rails right in between the seven and six and get on the, on the five ball short, short side. Unless it passes the nine ball, but it doesn't look like it does from here. pretty straight. Curious what he's going to do. Unlo again, unless the five ball passes the nine. If the five ball passes the nine, then uh, obviously that, that changes things, but it does not appear that it does. are killing me out here. I don't know if it's, uh, we have a lot of allergens in Arizona, but for whatever reason here in Vegas, I'm dying. Okay, Johnny tried to really come to the shot there. And, uh, it was a valiant effort, but obviously it came up a little short. And he put a, he put a pretty good wallop on that too. He was kind of straight, so he had to create an angle. I think we're going to see Oscar go for the jump cue here. And he did reach for it. And as you'd expect, he called it in the corner pocket. certainly expect him to get out from here. But we've seen a lot of a lot of strange things happen over the course of this couple days, so I don't think you can take anything for granted. Did get much thinner on the seven ball than he wanted to get. Table three, Norma and Bill. He uh, he may have an angle to bump this nine ball if he can bump into the nine ball pretty full.
Uh oh. Well, as I said, we've seen a lot of strange things happen. And nothing can be taken for granted. I think Johnny would like to be able to take a swing at the jump, but this is a difficult jump if he does elect to go that route, because it's it's awkward. The object the object ball that he needs to jump is further away from the cue ball than it is the object ball that he needs to hit. So if he were to try to jump at this, uh, it would be a pretty tough one. I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to have to come up with some sort of kick. He'll probably kick to the bottom rail and try to send the eight ball up the table and create some separation. Unless he unless he takes a swing at it, unless he takes a swing at it and tries to kick it in. I mean, I guess he could potentially go between the, the nine, the nine and the ten with some inside English and come back at it if he wanted to take some kind of swing at it. Uh, okay, he is looking to go to the bottom rail. He'd like to hit it pretty full in the face. steps up to a little tester on this table he does he has to hit this pure on these four and an eighth inch pockets he has to hit it pretty pure to get back down here for the nine ball we saw yesterday with both players making some kind of down the stretch making some little mistakes and then uh, we ended up getting to a point where we were knotted up at 18 and Oscar pulled out ahead and won 25 to 18. see the one ball it's pretty good because the three ball is just right there in front of the side pocket so he doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. I'm not sure if he can see the one ball though. I guess obviously he can. He's getting down on it. I couldn't quite see behind him because uh, obviously I didn't want to go up there and disrupt him to try to look behind him. What am I looking at? See, this this set of balls just has me all messed up. The two ball I thought was the ten ball this time. Is that the two ball or the ten ball? Ten ball. It is the ten ball. Okay, I'm not that messed up. So he was playing position for the three ball. All right, sorry guys. Trying to call the action here, getting fumbled up over these ball colors. I uh, I apologize. No, it's not the 10 ball, it's the 2 ball, look. See, never mind. I was right. Joey gave me bad information. So the ball... You know, anybody looking at the shot, it could be pocketed off the four ball, but he won't do that because it's too unpredictable where the four ball is going to be after that, and that's his next shot. So he's going to go ahead and just try to back cut this in. And he hit it really nice. 
question I have is, where's the five ball go? Does that five ball pass the eight? Or pass the ten, rather? It's tough. So Joey's sitting in a, in a position where he can kind of see if that five ball passes the ten. Um, he said it's pretty tight. Oh, really? Yeah, you see it? Uh-uh. Yeah. He may have to draw back and try to get on the short side of this ball. Okay. Johnny called the seven. He's going to play the combination. He was probably looking at that shot the entire time, but uh, he just overhit the four ball slightly. Because it doesn't appear that the five passes the ten. Well, he made a nice little shot there. Should be good from here. Of course, I don't want to bring the commentator curse that we keep talking about. I say that half-jokingly because that's superstitious stuff that I don't particularly believe in. Alright, I'm back in action, Jimmy. He's back. So, uh, what did I miss? Uh-oh. Gave up a little long on this. Yeah, it didn't get where he wanted, that's for sure. You know, it is with with uh, tough equipment with tight pockets, there is one thing I'll say is that it's so imperative to stay in line. Anytime you see these guys miss a ball or something, it's, it's almost always because they got out of line. Yeah. You know, they got out of line and then they had to do something more than, than they wanted to do. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's always anxiety before a match, right? Yeah. You know, especially with this kind of money, backers, and what's going on and so yesterday before the match I'm sure that you know it threw him off a little bit you know but now today you know get some rest come back and see if you can play better you know I'll take too many pills Jimmy too many <laughs> over the counter I mean that stuff doesn't work allergy pills don't work I take some vitamin C. Vitamin D. I had to clean that up. I realized somebody can misinterpret that. What? <laughs> With the pills. Oh. <laughs> no, we're talking about regular yeah. medicine. I was taking some allergy pills. Like I said, for whatever reason, I don't know why the climate in Arizona and, and Las Vegas or you know Phoenix area obviously pretty pretty close, but for whatever reason I come here and my allergies are just on fire. I think it's because I went to Putters the other night and there's yeah. smoke in there. Yeah, so I think, I think so. I'm still feeling the residual effects of being in the smoky room all night. Johnny's got a good safe here. He's got like 412 balls he can hide behind <laughs> on the bottom of the table. Don't exaggerate. It's only like 390. Oh, now he's going to make it. Yeah, that's not exactly... Not what he wanted to do there. No. Well, now he's in a super tough spot. Really is. He may, he's he going to have to come behind this. Up or? No, I think he's going to come. I think he'll come two rail behind it and kick at it, yeah, like over by this side matter. pocket. He can come at it from the side rail. Come maybe and give you a look at it here. Maybe even three rails. I mean, there's really limited options, but if he banks off this near the side pocket over here, he can come in behind it and if he hits it perfect, he can have the two slide up the rail and leave the cue ball kind of stuck there. That would take a perfect shot, though. Well, it could have been worse for him. Absolutely. 
He left Oscar a full ball, but he didn't leave him a great shot. He'll probably be behind that nine ball, though, after this shot. Oh, no, okay, so the two ball is probably going to be behind the nine ball. Yeah, there's got a lot of traffic down there. I think he was playing what, what he felt like was probably a fairly safe shot, even if he missed, but... Uh, I don't think he was anticipating hanging it in the hole. Yeah, and hitting that 10 and, ball didn't help. The, yeah, <clears throat> and hitting the 10 ball, so. He's got to get down past the middle of the table for the three ball here, so this is no cinch here. He's got to do a little something. He came down, he's going to shoot the... I can't open this side, right? Rushed into that six, and so now he's gonna he's gonna go defense here. I think he'll just take the cue ball up by the nine here. Oh, wow, that's risky. Oh. Yeah, so I'm lining that up, and I'm thinking he can't be going through that window, can he? <laughs> I mean, that was literally a, about a ball's width window to miss the side pocket and miss the five ball. That was really close. I kind of figured he'd hit it a little fatter and take it up by the nine. Oscar missed it. Unless he was playing safe, but I think he was going for it. Yeah. Looks like Johnny can see it. Yeah, and while the five tied up with the eight, it's it still goes in the side pocket. No worries there. Johnny just needs to make this three and get himself a shot on the pink five or four. Yeah, the six ball is in a position where it might force him to take a little bit of a longer shot on the four ball. Yeah because he's kind of limited in what he can do with the cue ball being on the rail. Or if he does elect to try to do something with it, you know, obviously increases the difficulty with the cue ball being on the rail like that. It's such a steep cut, you really can't hang below the six. You're going to have to let it run up table. Yeah, he was, like I said, forced well, to take a, a longer shot on that four ball because of where the six ball is. I don't think he loves it. know if you can see the whole ball here. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure if you got there. He's looking at it as if he could make it. So. Yeah, it does look like he's going right into it, doesn't it? Yep. He's using some inside English to come around, and he hit it real nice. That's a real nice shot from there. Yeah, it was. Of course, nothing's easy in this match. Yeah. You know, he hits a real nice shot, works the cue ball around, and ends up right on the rail on a shot where he really would like to be able to cue and draw the ball. Do you think this goes off the eight? Because if it does, it might give him a little bit of a uh, little bit of forgiveness if, I don't if he like wants it. to elevate and, and draw I mean, his ball back a little bit. Now Johnny's going to play it, he's going to cut it, because he leaned over to Oscar and said, I'm going to hit the side of it, but he I'm going to hit it first. Him, like I said, he's got to draw that ball back, so. Oh, he didn't draw that. Yeah, I think he wanted to draw it a little bit, just didn't get a, get there. Yeah, he, uh, he elevated awfully high for that action on the cue ball. Yeah. I knew we'd end up with a cut shot here. And the eight does pass the nine. Yep. So you know, that's, that's a shot that comes up that uh, I see a lot of players uh, don't always see is when you have a ball on the rail like that and you're trying to play position on it. Sometimes you can come to the, to the rail that that ball, object ball is on beneath the ball like, yeah. like he did there. Just like that. And still get... Oh, uh oh Look at this. Yeah, he's a little dejected there, kind of hung his head after that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Johnny's feeling some frustration. He's, uh, 
I think between the two players, it seems as if, and maybe I'm just, maybe I'm wrong on this. So tell me, tell me if I if I'm missing something. It I'll seems, keep you in line. It seems like between the two of these players, Johnny has given up more games that that he was probably supposed to get out. Today like, or today. overall? Today, yeah. There was a couple games early on where he missed a 10 ball twice in the same game, then he missed a 9 ball, and now like, yeah. it seems like he's missed more more balls toward the end of the rack. Yeah. I'll agree with that. So I'm sure that uh, you know he showed a little frustration there with that shot. I'm sure that's more of a compounding from a few shots, building up some frustration. to do here. It's not a hanger. And it's the knot of that 13. Oscar laying into it a little bit more that time. You could see some more uh, some more body action out of him too. He tried to really lay into that one. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of players at this point, kind of where I am in my pool journey. There's not a lot of players that I would like consider paying money to to just pick their brain for a couple days and get some lessons. Oscar's one of them. You right. know, I think. I could see myself talking to him and saying, hey, Oscar, could I just come out to Sacramento and, you know, maybe you work with me for a few days. You know, just his temperament, his demeanor, his approach to the game. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> well, he hung this ball up, but he left Johnny really nothing. I mean, yeah. One ball so deep in the hole that, uh, so he's going for the jump cue. Well, I guess well, yeah, he if he be gets between that 5-4 window... Yeah, if he jumps over three, I think there's space between the between the 5 and 4. Yeah. Oh, no, it's... Well... Oh, no, He's mind. tying up a ball. I thought he was going for... Didn't it look like he went to go get the jump cue? Well, he definitely went over to his... He, he, he went to go get his... his uh, foul cue. Yeah. That's the foul cue. Intentional foul cue. <laughs> the, that's the intentional foul cue. Cue. <laughs> He did. He went over to his seat and grabbed something. We're joking, but Oscar's got like five cues out over here. One for every occasion. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy back in the day. Somebody said his name not too long ago. His, I think his name was Bill. Well, I'll call him like Wild Bill or some crazy stuff. He used to go to the... He was like a mainstay at, at the Reno, the Sands Reno tournament oh, during really? the 90s. And this guy literally would have... I don't even know how many cues. I don't want to exaggerate, but it was a lot of freaking cues. And he would use a different cue for for like different shots. He had like his cut his cut <laughs> cue. He had like his draw cue. It, like he'd go over to. It was Jeez, ridiculous. That's crazy. And he was really psycho. He was he was nuttier than a fruitcake. <laughs> we had a guy back in Maryland that had a cue that it kind of looked like a tree limb where it wasn't straight. Have you ever seen one of those? Where the cue had like a bend in it? I have, yeah. yeah it was I have of, seen one of those. We probably, it's probably the same guy. You probably saw him at a same tournament. <laughs> you know, I don't want to take him, but I'll wait because I'm going to come back to that story about that guy because I am going to tell a pretty funny story about him. We'll see what happens here, but I don't want to take too much away from this. Well, it looks like there's a little thing you can do here, but that guy, just to show you, I mean, he was kooky, but, uh, so they used to have this, uh, a lot of older time players will remember the, the USPPA, United States Pool Player Association, it was, uh, they ran handicap tournaments, it was started by Gene Starry, I want to say in the 80s or so, okay, Oscar laid down a pretty nice shot here. Yeah, he did tough ball to kick at 
because that object ball is covered up by everything. He, he may have to go for the jump cue here. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. I'm kind of curious to see if so, the three has room to bank here. He, uh, that's what it looks like he called. He called the three, I believe. It looks like he has just enough room to bank the three, and if he makes this shot, he should have a good shot on the four. Because cue ball's going to go to the left off this ball. Not enough body English. I was about to start cheering. <laughs> I was about to start clapping. But uh, he hit it good. He hit it as well as he could, he could hope for. Oscar may have to, if he can see any of this ball, he may be able to thin the three kind of behind the uh, four or five, swing around two rails, and uh, hope to lay the cue ball down here on this bottom rail. But I don't know if he can see enough of the ball to do that, or if he yeah, can even see the ball. I think he has to be able to see a piece of it, no? I think if if he ends up kicking this ball, you probably can't see it at all. Oh, he's doing like a little little slider in here, a little curveball. He, he's telling us where he wants it to go. He's pointing. Yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna be careful the way I say this because I'm Alina Mike, but it's a masse where he's gonna come in and try to hit the three in the face and then float the cue ball behind the four or five and bank the three out. Look at this. Look at this shot. Oh. Somebody clap. Did he get him? No, I don't think he got him, but that oh. was almost a uh, great effort. That was touchy because he needed enough pace to really paint that three out of there. Yeah. Plus the left spin was going to throw the three away from the four or five. So that is a pretty clever idea. Okay, John is going to go ahead and go for this down this bottom right hand corner pocket. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at our uh, angle telling you guys the bottom right hand corner. From your perspective, it's the bottom left hand corner. Oh, now he's looking at the side. Okay. I think he, he may have changed his mind. And yeah, we'll get a good view of this. We'll be able to tell as soon as he contacts yeah, he initially, the three ball. He initially called it in the corner pocket. Uh oh, scratch. Oh. Just. Let's see if Oscar can run these balls out cleanly. It's There's really no issues here, so I expect him to do it. Just a matter of whether he gets in trouble or not. Well, there's really not a lot that can go wrong here other than he'd have to make some sort of unforced error to miss a ball or something because uh, the balls are all sitting real nice. Meanwhile, he didn't hit that three center in the pocket. It kind of shimmied in there a little bit. He's not happy with that shot. It's okay. He'll he needs to keep the cue ball over on the left-hand side of the table, and so that's why he's not too happy about that shot. So I don't think the 7 passes the 10. Maybe it does. <clears throat> Ooh, look where that 9 laid. Yeah, the 9's probably not playable on the side. <laughs> See, that's what I was saying earlier. It's just nothing is a guarantee. Well, that's right? what I was going to say. You know, he comes to the table and... You know, it looks like a, an out that Oscar Dominguez is going to run out 99 out of 100 times with no issues whatsoever. But it's just his first shot, he kind of juggled the ball a little bit in. And then he got out of line on the second shot. And it's just the conditions here playing on the four and an eighth. They really do. And, you know, I know that, you know, players... He hit a nice shot there. He did, but he's got to watch his scratch. Is he going to scratch? Yes, oh he is. Goodness. Wow. Look at that. And in terms of a stroke, that's one of his better strokes that he put on the ball. It's just... That really is. Really wow. unfortunate. 
I mean, so that's that's a huge game right there, because Oscar's got ball in hand on the three ball with a table that looks very manageable, and now Johnny's going to win this game. Well, obviously the knight well, does go in the side pocket. I don't, I don't think it goes. I guess it does. Yeah, it must go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons I was never a big like fist pumper or you know because it's never over until the final ball drops and then even then I'm not well, like a big do, ah. well, if you do want to pump your fist yeah wait till it's over yeah so Johnny did uh, he's hitting that cue ball high I noticed he's but he came up with a ball in the break he just doesn't have a shot One time I did like a fist pump, like for a win, I think. Yeah. Was, uh, I was playing in an open event in... Uh, <laughs> I fist pumped and I accidentally hit my opponent. <laughs> no. <laughs> Check this out. There's a push there. Uh, he's going to get this one back, I think. Yeah, I think he's getting this one back. I don't think he's happy with it either. I think he wanted to push up a little further where he'd have at least a jump shot. <laughs> but I'm playing a good player. I think his name was Julio Aquino from Florida. And, uh, you know, he had won a few of Tony Crosby's events, and so I knew his name, but he didn't know me, and I, I came down from Jacksonville, and it was over somewhere in Tampa, and we're playing a match, <clears throat> and we're hill-hill, and I'm completely, I get completely out of line on the eight ball, we're playing nine ball, and I have a length of the table bank. It's one of those where I didn't like any safety options, so I was like, you know what, I'll just bank it. So I banked it, and I made it. And I had a length of the table bank on the nine. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, I guess I have to bank the nine now. So I banked the nine and I made it and I did a fist pump. And he was like, he comes up, he says, I don't know why you're happy. You didn't beat nobody. You know, kind of like, I'm, I'm just an okay player. And I was like, whatever, man. I've seen you win, win a few of these. I know you can play. Who was it, Tony Crosby? No, his name was Julio oh. Aquino, oh, I think. Okay. Yeah, good, good player from that area. Uh, I know he, he obviously, he didn't like the fact that he lost, and I guess he really didn't like the fact that I fist bumped a little. And that's like the only time I think I've ever done that. I, think, I know he called the one, but he, I think he might be looking to go three rails behind this ball because if he hits that third rail and comes in deep, he can send the one ball. Up yeah, I like ball. that. But no, no he, he went right into it. At it. Yeah, it's not going to work out for him. Yeah, that was just sour grapes on his part. Yeah, I think so. You know, you see that. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of ego in this sport. You know, and a lot of people don't really do a great job of handling the ups and downs. And look, look he's going to roll right behind it. Just gonna keep rolling. Oscar didn't hesitate at all to go straight to the jump cube. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, though, when, uh, when you have these shots in your repertoire, it certainly opens up a whole slew of possibilities. Well, he got a piece of it. He did get a piece of it. <clears throat> he didn't leave anything easy, especially with the position of where the three ball is. So it's almost not really worth it for Johnny. You know, here's a shot I like here, Jimmy. I like banking this two ball into the nine. Calling the nine. The nine would slow the two's momentum if you make it. If you miss it, though, the cue ball stays there and the two flies up towards that cluster. Well, he called it. He called the nine? Yep, he did. Great minds think alike. I wouldn't hit this soft, though. Put a little pace on it. Might even be able to work the cue ball down further towards that corner pocket. Oh, he just... Uh-oh. Well, I think I was saying, a, Jimmy, that shot was very ugly. risky. I didn't know if that was the best shot. <laughs> well, he's going to probably try to kick and stick this. I think he has an angle. He might be able to kick behind the seven. It's obviously touchy because the seven's in play. Yeah, but I think he can hit this with some low left. He can hit this with some low left and uh, try to shorten it up off that side rail. Hit the two ball relatively full. Yeah. Stick behind the seven. 
I mean, you gotta try to get... You gotta try to hit the two pretty full, which you risk hitting the seven first. But the one good thing is, if you don't get enough of it, the eight's kind of there to keep the cube ball from sliding out, you know? So if you do hit it a little thinner than you intended, as the cue ball slides down towards that corner pocket, you're going to hit the 8. Kind of might leave it behind that cluster. The question then would be, do you have enough power on that 2 ball to get it back up table? But yeah, I think the kick and stick is the play here. This is a shot that the top professionals are just so good at. You know, they just cripple you with this shot. One, the recognition of seeing when it comes up, and two, the execution. Get there though. Yeah. Both players showing a little frustration. I, w I really do wonder how much this table, like, it, it, is it the difficulty of the table? I really feel like the table has to be coming into play. Yeah. Um, I know that, that Oscar mentioned that, no, no, no problem, blah, blah, blah. I'm just feeling uncomfortable, but. And I know he's played great pool on tight equipment. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I know both he told me have. before they started today, he told me he's played some of the best sets of his life on this very table. You know, but the fact that he really hasn't been in action, yeah, in action, hasn't felt the heat in a while. You know, playing an exhibition against Fedor, you know, a friend of yours and you're not really gambling on it. It's not the same. Because, like, I feel like, you know, you, you watch... You know, if Dennis Okoye was to get up here and start playing, he'd, he'd probably be running out oh, yeah, on the stage. Like, everything, yeah. Like he's playing on buckets. Which, if you hang out for a while, he might. He might be up here doing that. He was up here last night. Oh, yeah. As soon as the match ended, Dennis was over here wanting to get dibs on this table. And that's the thing about Mark Griffin, the owner of this place, and Gary Lutman, the manager. They get it, right? They're not going to let, you know, just... Somebody jump on this table when you got all these professionals that are here wanting to play on the best equipment, so they take care of them and get them on these tables. I was here one night and I was gambling with a guy that Oscar knows pretty well, a guy named Skip, and I had just finished and somebody else was playing Skip. You know, a pretty decent player from the Sacramento area. And uh, Gary came up and said, Hey, look, guys, we got a big match. They're going to bet a lot. I'm going to play on this table. Everybody gets it, you know. Skip and whoever he was playing at that point just moved on. He's gonna bump this. Yeah, so he elected to just go ahead and go into it. Which wasn't, which wasn't really a bad play. I mean, you figure if you go into that ball, you have a lot of possibilities. general rule of thumb is to not go in the balls if you don't have to, but there are times where uh, you can take a little bit of a calculated risk. like punch counter punch here mm -hmm. Oscar was done on that ball then he got up and he you guys couldn't see this on the stream but he kind of like shook his head and cleared his eyes like he wasn't seeing as clear as he wanted to there. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. That's a pretty big miss there. Allergy wise, I'm gonna go to use a tissue, grab a tissue. Yeah, I'm sorry, you can't practice, sorry. Okay, so is Johnny going to take a break here? Alright. He put a nice hit on him that time. See, that's how he was breaking earlier in the day when he was just warming up. Yeah. It's not going to pay but off, he though. He didn't make a ball, but you know what? If he could continue to hit him like that, I, you know, I think some good things are going to happen.
I mean, you know, you hit the balls hard and you don't make a ball, you don't make a ball, there's nothing you can do about that. But, you know, the fact that he hit them squarely and he hit the cue ball well, that, uh, you know, that's all you can do, right? Yeah. In this format where you're not using a template where, you know, you can, or you're not able to manipulate the balls or whatever. Oscar's in really good shape here. So again, Johnny up by two games. Dry break, and here comes Oscar at the table, trying to cut the deficit. He's going to go swing around here. I wonder if he'll... Uh, I mean, if he does elect to go two rails, that's what I was just going to say. He's going to have to squeeze between the five and the eight. That is the path he's looking at. You saw he just laid his cue down there. He's going to rub the eight, but he's going to come out good. You know, Jimmy, yesterday these guys were wearing, uh, you know, like sweatshirts and longer sleeve shirts, and they took it off to wear the short sleeves, and today they started with short sleeves. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm freezing in here. It is cold in here too. I'm really cold. I'm yeah. in a sweatshirt. I got my hood on. If people could see us now, <laughs> I'm yeah, like yesterday the uh, the like AC the Unabomber. Kept, yeah. <laughs> yesterday the AC kept cutting on and off, and it would get cold, and then all of a sudden it would get hot, and it would get cold, and yeah. it would get hot. Today it's just been the AC has been running nonstop. Yeah. But these players are still in their t-shirts and well, they're up there under the light, and up there moving around. It's hard to see on the camera, but Oscar's t-shirt says lucky. <laughs> so. I think I'll come down one rail here off this. Yeah, off the bottom rail. Top row. Top, bottom, however you want to. Top on the, top on the uh, monitor, but bottom if you're standing at the table, right? No. Oh, no, you're right. Bottom, bottom is, is where the, the balls rail. are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's the head rail. <laughs> this is the foot rail. Never mind. Come on, Jimmy. You know what I'm saying. We've been doing this long enough, man. <laughs> what <laughs> What end do they break from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jimmy and I started commentating this summer, early this summer, <laughs> at uh, in Arizona Junior. at Junior's Trap House. <laughs> Scott Frost gave it that nickname because he had this... <laughs> You know, really? I told you not to go, Jimmy. Back in the day, we used to hang out with you all the time when there was smoke, but it's been so many years since. Yeah, I, I used to do it all the time before I got tonsil cancer. <laughs> Any connection? <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah, no, I was making the point about uh, Oscar shirt saying Lucky. Like, you know, I have Lucky brand gear. I'm wearing Lucky brand jeans right now. Sometimes I have, uh, I have like. Are you gonna tell us about your underwear? What yeah, I was gonna say I have, <laughs> I have like the, you know, clover leaf underwear. <laughs> Fact that no, I'm not wearing those today. I'm wearing the martini underwear. But uh, the point is, when you're playing pool, you gotta pull out all the stops. Yeah, Sometimes the lucky sub underwear. Sub subliminal or also oh, yeah. a little subliminal message for your. Heck yeah. For your opponent. Somebody tells you you got lucky, you're like, yeah, of course I did. Look yeah, at my shirt. Look at my shirt. So this is kind of interesting. So, oh, no, never mind. The four balls. Right? I was looking at the five ball and the four ball mixed up again. So he's good here. There he goes. It'll be a, he's in perfect line to just, just follow around with a little bit of running English three rails for the five ball in the same side pocket. Yeah. Not a whole lot can go wrong here. He hit he, it a little he firm. Hit it hard. He had a choice word for it too. Yeah. He had a an like adjective a, to describe that shot. Yeah. You have to remind Oscar later it's not the cue ball's fault. Fault I rolled too far. 
You know He's actually like fine here, though, Jimmy. Yeah, he is. He can. He'll play this three rails as well. Or he may be able to. Nah, I think, think you're right. Three rails. rails. Yeah. He hit that real nice. And he hit that perfect. Just put this ball in. Leave yourself an angle on the seven, and he's in yeah. great shape here. He'll probably try to stop it, if not even come back an inch or so, just because he needs a little bit of an angle to get back on the. I really wish I knew how many times today Johnny's going up by two and Oscar's tied it up. I know. It's like it's like three or four times now. Yeah. So I had a thought and I lost it. If that nine ball passes the ten ball, he may have to shoot this in the uh, bottom left-hand corner pocket, or he may have to draw back for the side pocket. Either that, or he's going to have to punch this and pop it out, which I don't particularly like on these tight pockets. Neither does he, obviously. So he is going to play a short side, and it does pass the ten. And it is interesting, right? Because Johnny didn't do anything wrong. In fact, that was one of well, the, he broke dry at well, fifteen my, thirteen. My point is, is that was one of the one of his best breaks in terms of how he hit it, and he just didn't make a ball. He's but just, he yeah, it's just something happens every time he gets up two games. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of nobody to tell Johnny Archer what to do on a pool table, right? But I almost feel like. If this were going to day three, and I had a chance to talk to him, yeah, and but so I, why not model the success of today with some of these players, Fedor Gors and well, Shane? I think at this particular point, though, he's here right now, and that he's got to go with what he's got. I don't think he can like change his technique. Okay. I mean, that that would be something he's got to do at home, you know, on the practice table. Would be my opinion. It's hard to. It's hard to. Yeah, but you know, if you just look at Oscar break, like on that break, it was an excellent break. Oscar's gonna put him in jail here. Nice shot. And he is in jail. I don't even think he can. Well, he can go one rail, short rail. Yeah, he can stiffen it. He's oh, he can go off the top he, rail he too. He can go off the side rail, and that is the rail he's going to. But it's almost like that 10 ball break where you strike down through the center of the cue ball, you follow through a foot or two on the cloth, so you get that nice pop, your cue ball's gonna back up toward you, you know, but when Johnny's, it's almost like he's swinging an uppercut shot like you would if you're a baseball player trying to hit the ball out of the park, you know, rather than kind of swinging down to get backspin. Oh, look at this. Kinda, oh, I thought he was in a... Yeah, got, that spin got, on it. I thought it was that worked out for him. But it's kind of like he's, you know, when baseball, when you start uppercutting like that, yeah. chances are you miss your bats and strikes on a little less. But anyway, I don't know about that analogy, but <clears throat> I think if he just watched Oscar, he could literally put it in play in this match. You know, the biggest thing, I think, with the 10-ball break is treating it like a shot. Uh-oh. That's not what he wanted is to do. Is treating it like a shot? Treating it like yeah. a shot. Right? Yeah. Um, for so long, before people knew about the rack and the break, it was just hit the break as hard as you can. But now, the, the 10 ball break is a controlled shot. You know, if you treat it like a shot, rather than just a, you know, just a free for all where you're just trying to slam it, you can get to the point where you're mastering that break and getting some really good results. So I don't know that there's anything sitting in a position where uh, he can break this 6-8 up. Well, I guess the closest thing would be the 4-ball, right? Well, actually, no, I apologize. I was looking at the 10-ball thinking it's the 2-ball. 
so he's got to worry about this three ball before he worries about anything else. Yeah, if he gets in, no, nope, he didn't get that. Well, obviously now Oscar does have the ball, but I don't think he would elect to do it because what's he going to do with the four ball? Well, if he comes with some inside English and hits the top of the eight ball, he could slide over, the cue ball could slide over to that long rail <coughs> above the four ball there. That it is doesn't look like for a lot, though. It is. He chose not to do that. So at this point, it tells me that he's either going to try to get really good shape on this five to do something with it, which he's looking at that right now. And the good part about that is if he doesn't get where he needs to get on the yeah, five, he can always safe. just come back and play safe on the six. Yeah, if he can get him to about the middle of the table, roughly the middle of the table, where he can come. Just like that. Now, yeah, if he could come to this bottom rail the way he's looking at it and come off and, cl and clip the eight, that's perfect because then he knocks the six ball right in front of the quarter pocket. Cue ball comes up a little. Yeah, that'd be a heck of a shot. That is what he's looking for. In fact, he, he was pointing at the rail there, too, so... Thinning it now and looking to try to get him behind the nine up the table. Yeah. Or down table, sorry. You see? I know my up from my down. Look at the way he uh, really delicately placed that six behind the eight. That was very nice. Yeah, he got the he got the added mileage out of that shot by putting the six. Now I'm gonna show eight. you show you this view though, Jimmy. If Johnny comes into the six ball the right way, it might might That's be able true. to go there off the be, eight. Could potentially go off the eight. And they're talking about it, and Oscar's standing down there by it just to make sure it's a good hit. But I think Johnny's probably want to come in two rails. That was a good hit. Yeah, it was. Expect a safe here. Put the cue ball down behind the 10. Johnny might have a shot if that six ball's off the rail enough. He might. Kick? Kick shot? Yeah, he could potentially slide behind it with some English and stick the cue ball there and bring the cue ball, bring the six ball one rail. To the side cushion and back up to the end table. Speed be really important on that shot. Or he could thin it on the right side. Obviously that's a or he can just try to cut it. Which is what he's doing as well. So or you know he's this is he's gone after yeah, he's gone after some shots. A lot of these tough cut shots. It's like but you know what he was it's on almost top, if he Oscar was on top of his game, I mean he really had a high offense. Yeah. It's almost like Oscar could take advantage of this, you know, because he hasn't made all of these that he's gone for, but, you know, by kind of like you would in one pocket, kind of baiting a person into taking some difficult shots. <laughs> um, like, because this is at the extent of what you want to, to me, this is a little past the extent of what you want to go for in a situation like this. Well, Johnny's thinking might be the, you know, the safety. He doesn't like the safety any more than he likes the shot, so might as well take the offensive option and give yourself a chance to win the game. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I guess between a hard safe and a hard shot, you probably want to go for the offense, but that was really hard. Unfortunately, that was uh, pretty much a do-or-die shot on this table for this game because unless you unless you missed it so bad that he ended up, you know, six ball coming back to the middle of the table. Yeah. 
It wasn't even like, it was such a sharp cut, you couldn't even do one of those where you overcut it and leave the opponent the same shot, you know? You know, there's another shot there that actually you can do. You can go rail first as if you're going to rail, rail first in um, with inside English. Yeah, kind of like a one pocket shot. And it almost always, if you miss it, it almost always goes to that side rail and right just back. right back right. To, to the head rail. So it's actually a fairly safe shot to, uh, to play. I didn't like it the way those balls were laying, though. There's there's certain times where that looks a little more appealing than the way that was looking, at least to me. Yeah, even there, like I said, that shot almost all... Now, as far as really having an opportunity to make the ball, yeah, it was sitting in a pot in a position where where chances are he wasn't going to make it, but... Nice. Good break, but the cue ball... Lost the cue ball a little. Yeah, he did, but he got a kiss. I think the two's going to hurt him. He might be able to see it. But uh, Chris Adams, who's, by the way, big, big match in two weeks coming up in Phoenix. He's playing Avery Reese, a big one-pocket match for 10000 apiece. I'm going to be streaming that one. But um, Chris was telling me a story about one day he was playing a guy pool, beat him. They were throwing quarters on the spot, beat him. Then the guy's like, oh, I bet you you can't beat me in bocce ball. Ugh, Oscar misses that ball. Hey, ask Chris who taught him to pitch coins. Okay. <laughs> and, and so he says, uh, yeah, I bet you can't beat me in bocce ball. And apparently that's Chris's specialty. So they're at <laughs> Colby's corner pocket one night, rolling balls 40 feet across the place. <laughs> when Chris beat the guy out of thousands of dollars. Oh, we'll, we'll think of creative ways to gamble, won't we? It's gonna be fine here. He's in pretty good shape here. Yeah, like to. Keys the four ball, really. You got to get down a little further down than where the cue ball is right now to make that four on the side. It's sitting pretty good. And it's a nice shot here to give himself yeah, a good like angle. To, he'd like to be pretty much on the line that's kind of between the spot and the four ball. Would be perfect. And then when I sit close, I said, I said, yeah, maybe I should shout. Shout! Shout! Dominic Dunn, he's sending me messages. Dunn's came way too far down. Dunsky's Dungeon there in Florida. A lot of good action, a lot of good money matches there. If, you, if you're not part of his uh, Facebook group, get on there. The guy's uh, one of the great ones in the game, doing a lot of good things for the game of pool. And he happens to love Jennifer Brzezinski. So, just need to throw that in there. So yeah, you got kind of flat on this ball, didn't he? Came way down too far. Uh, he may have to shoot this up in the upper uh, right-hand corner pocket. He may have to just roll this forward and play this up in the upper right-hand corner pocket. Wonder if he's considering Ralph first here, Jimmy. These are these shots. You can make these pretty easy, Ralph first. Yeah, possibly. He's looking and he'll have enough English like and momentum that I think he could even shoot maybe the seven ball in the same pocket. You really got to put a lot of spin on it, though. Yeah, now, he elected for the rail first, but with a softer touch. And he still was playing for that upper. He might have been playing for the side pocket. He might have been thinking he could he could bring it up enough for the side, but that's what I was looking at. When I saw the shot, I thought he was going to have to roll up and play the seven up in the upper right-hand corner pocket. Yeah, he's looking at the side here. 
Looks like he can barely beat the 8 here. Oh no, he went to the corner. Yes, that's tough. We're that's a, a, that's a big of, turn of events here. We are seeing a lot of games, uh, I don't want to say given away, but... but uh, Oh, you can say it. Uh, well, I mean, with only a few balls left on the table, yeah. you know, uh, kind of seen it more often than you would expect with players of this caliber. Typically speaking, with players of this caliber, when they get down to the last few balls, it's it's usually pretty much over. They're usually out. Yeah. But we're seeing a lot of a lot of games, you know, given back and forth within the last few balls of the rack. He's going to come up a little short, but he'll be go okay if he can go three rails. Oh, never mind. This ball actually rolled quite a bit further than I expected it to. You know, I was going to make a comment about that, because, you know, I played on this table a couple months ago for that Southwestern, whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, Definitely congratulations on that victory. Arizona coming up here and beating Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, you know. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> no, but uh, one thing that we all noticed, and we just attributed it to the new cloth at the time, but we all felt like we were over rolling balls, like they were just rolling further than we, like all of us felt like that. Yeah. And it's interesting to me that going forward, I, I mean, I, th that's what seems to be happening here too, is that balls seem to be going, like you made comment early on, that uh, it seemed like both of the players, their miss hits were over hits rather than under hits. Yeah. And, uh, well, even on that shot right there from Oscar, as soon as it contacted the eight, it looked like it was perfect. And not that it's bad, but it overran about six inches and ends up right on the rail, makes it just a little bit tougher. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I wonder if it's, uh... yeah, I don't, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just my imagination or coincidence, or maybe it's the fact that there's like five lights over the table. Five additional. Lights that would typically go over a um, like a seven foot table, and so they have two down each long rail for a total of four, and then they have one at the head of the table, and all of that's to create better lighting around the table for the stream, for you know pictures, taking pictures of players, things like that. But what Jimmy's saying is that having all that light up there. It's possible that it creates this effect where kind of, kind of like the Moscone Cup, we saw how with so much light there, the table was like playing on a sheet of ice, you know, and the players had a really hard time controlling the speed. He put a nice smooth stroke on that shot. Yeah, he did. Oscar does have a real nice, he, he has a real nice stroke where he gets a lot of movement out of it, a lot of action out of the cue ball with not a lot of effort, you know. Yeah. He could kind of, he's right on that tweener line where he doesn't have a, if he had more angle, it would be obvious he's going to maybe go back and forth or something. If he had a little bit less angle, it would be obvious he's going to go ahead and try to roll it. But he's right on that kind of tweener line where, you know, does he kind of drag this with some left-hand English and just kind of, just kind of hold just it up, roll which it. it looks like that is what he's doing. Oh no, he went ahead and decided to go back and forth. He's going to scratch here. Wow. No nope, point. He hit that ball really nice. He really powered yeah. it in there, didn't he? Well, not only that, I mean, at that angle down the pocket, you gotta, you really need to hit the center of the pocket to... Uh, you really need to hit the center of the pocket on that shot. And yeah. then to hit it with that much with that much uh, speed you know, increases the likelihood that you're not going to hit it exactly pure. Yeah. So he put... Two real nice strokes back to back there. Put the extension on for this shot. Well, 
Johnny's going to take a little break. All right, guys. Back to the action. We had to cut off that Hal Tips commercial a little bit. Sorry, still learning how to use this software. But uh, certainly want to thank all the sponsors, including Hal Tips and Cues. Uh, we were able to get quite a few of the commercials in there. So Johnny uh, kind of came up on the 50-yard line here with the uh, six ball. So let's see what he elects to do here. Let me take a look at the other angle. Looks like he called the side pocket here. He doesn't have a lot of room to work with the cue ball. It's really close to the rail. unfortunate he hit a really nice shot there uh, but just cue ball got hung up behind the eight ball and didn't really get rewarded there was, he had to really do all he could to pocket that ball on the side <clears throat> which led him to not really being able to get the cue ball out of that corner pocket I think he's probably going to go with a jump shot here. It's got enough space with where the eight ball is. That you might as well take it on. And sure enough, he's coming to the table now with his jump cue. He's going to play it for the bottom right here. Good elevation and good contact with the object ball. He didn't make it, but of course he comes up with a uh, back. Your coffee should be coming. Thank you. A fortunate leave here in Oscars. Really got to come with something here. This is a really good turn of events for Johnny, considering the fact that Oscar just jumped out by two games on him. Johnny certainly doesn't want Oscar to get up by three. I just can't get over the momentum changes here where one guy's up by two, then the other guy comes back and he's up by two. It's it really is like punch counter punch here. I mean it's far enough into this that you know the likelihood of of one player really pulling ahead seems to diminish as time goes on. But uh, you know obviously both players are well capable of Of, of doing just that, you know, they're out. Yeah, they're both making uncharacteristic mistakes. Oscar knows how important this game is. He was very meticulous in measuring out exactly where he wants to come yeah, off he the was cushion using here. That kind of, I don't know what you call that method. If you call it the mirror method or something, he was using that method where you essentially measure the distance of the object ball from the rail that you're going to hit. And then you take that same exact distance on your cue, and you stand back away from the rail, and then you look at where in relation to the cue ball yeah. to hit that. I, I don't know if I'm describing So does the it measurement well, go from the ball to the inside of the rail, and then from the inside of the rail to as you back up yes. to where you measured on the cue? Okay. Yeah. And then you look down that Then you look down that ball. line and see where you need where, where that line so scratch here. Look at this. I tell you what, over the last couple days, he's had a lot of scratches on kicks like that, you know, or, or just kicking in general, where it seems like he's gotten some unfortunate bounces on us. I mean, with where the seven ball ended up, if it was slightly softer, he probably would have been safe. Here Johnny is now with a chance to pull to within one. You know, I hate to admit, but... 
And I don't know why, maybe just because I want to mess around with it. I almost want to buy a set of these balls just to goof around with. I think I am going to buy a set. They look cool. I told you I'm playing with the Arcos 2 at my house. But, uh... Johnny put, put some good, uh... Put some heat on that rack, but he came up dry. Yeah, and he hit that cue ball pretty solid again and came up dry. You know, I'm surprised to see him because Johnny uh, obviously knows how to break from anywhere on the table. He, I'm kind of surprised to see him not have much success from that spot and then stick with that same spot. I would have expected to see him maybe experiment a little bit with moving the cue ball around. Because he's obviously, you know, not having a lot of success from that particular spot. Or maybe he's feeling like it isn't his you position, know, just how he's hitting it. Let me throw this one out there. With the way this table's playing, perhaps Johnny might feel like his best chance at winning is kind of to have... Not really, not really breaking the balls out and spreading the balls wide, and you know, going for run out pool just because the table's playing so tough. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's kind of maybe that's crazy of me to say, but well, I don't know if I would. I mean, he's right in the match and he's not breaking one. Well, I would say I. I mean, the fact that he's putting so much, you know, like he really put something into that ball. He he hit those balls pretty hard. Yeah. And uh, I think if he was trying some strategy like what you're talking about, that maybe he wouldn't he wouldn't be pounding the balls like that. I mean, it, this is amazing with the caliber of these two players. How many games both players have come to the table? I mean, it's un it's unreal, actually. You mean the number of innings they've had? Yeah, yeah. I agree. You'd be hard pressed to find another match with two players of this caliber. That this. had as many innings. Okay, you got. You know, I think. I, I think, think he's perfect here. I think I can say what I'm about to say without offending anybody. I mean, namely these two players. But I think if you were to ask either one of them, neither one of them would feel good about their play so far. Yeah. I think both of them would feel like. Agreed. Know. Well, we've seen them both play a lot better, but you know, you can't underestimate the effect that 2020's had on a lot of pool players. Yeah, even I mean, even just your ability to, to have access to play. But uh, Yeah, you know access isn't a problem for Oscar. That's but, true. But if there's no events coming up, if there's no matches coming up, what's the motivation? You know? Well, it is different, too, when you're not in action. I mean, like Oscar was talking about earlier. I mean, yeah, you can play great at home all you want, but it's not the same as being in, in the heat of battle. Anyway, he's in a pretty good spot here. The only, uh, the nine ball is a little, a little close to that side pocket. Yeah, with the position of the eight though, he should be able to pocket the eight and be right over close to that nine. Just little subtleties that you see from Oscar just speaks to the fact that he's not totally comfortable. He's not feeling great. He, he picked up the chalk there and kind of slapped it on the table a little bit before he went forward with that seven ball. There he does it again. See that? He's just used to a super high level play and I think he feels like he's not, he's just pressing a little bit. Well, he's definitely not on like cruise control right now, right? He's yeah. every game is is you know he's grinding it out right now. You know, he's not he's not on cruise control by any means. Yeah, he and, looks uh, great here though. He might just be he's just gonna float across for the ten in the bottom left. seemed to roll an extra couple inches to get him right there on the rail. Doesn't make any characteristic mistakes. 
mistakes. I think we might see a package here. I'm gonna go out on a limb. <laughs> well, he certainly walloped those balls, and he's gonna get a shot. Yes, he is. Look at this, and the three ball goes. So he's got the uh, he's got the one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, five sitting pretty good. Everything looks good, Everything's really. Sitting pretty good. I mean, getting from the uh, the six to the seven and the eight to the nine. Position of the five ball, I like being able to get where you need to get on the six to get to the seven. Everything looks good to me. I mean, the eight to the nine is not too bad because if you get uh, on the right hand side of the eight, you could easily just spin around two rails naturally and get on there. The, the you know the six to the seven because you only have one pocket to work with with this uh, seven ball. I don't believe it passes by the ten. No. Um, not the same no. So getting good on the six in order to get good on the seven is kind of paramount here. Yeah, he's. this is a real big opportunity for Oscar, and I think he wants to really take advantage of this, get up by three, and put himself six games from victory here. So what do you think, Jimmy? You think he'll slide up the rail here and try to leave himself an angle to... Yeah, I think he's going to have to just... Pocket a six and go to the right, or... Well, he's yeah. going to have to leave himself underneath it the way he did, uh, because the angle to get above it, where he could, where he could, uh, you know, pocket the six ball and go to the side rail and back out, that that what really just wasn't there to get that angle. So I think he had to take this angle. I expect to see him hit this with some outside and go two rails. No, he's, he's going to draw, draw it. He's yeah. going to draw it to the side rail with some outside. Or draw it back by the eight. Or just straight back. And he overcooked it yeah. just a little. Okay, he had a little less angle than I thought. Either that or he just he uh, he was able to kind of kind of cheat the angle a little bit with English. So he's still okay here. He just rolls this ball in. He should be perfect on the eight. Told you there. he'd be perfect on the eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did get a little of a break to eight because he actually is perfect. But. Yeah, he was playing for the eight in the side there again. Yeah, another one of those. Well, that's okay. That's a nice shot. He wanted oh. to get close to it, and he's going to be stuck on the rail here, but. He's going to make the nine. Yeah, he's going to... I don't think he's going to do too much to try to get the cue ball off that rail. I think he's just going to go ahead and shoot the ten ball from, yeah. from the rail because you don't want to risk missing this ball trying to get... trying to get too creative. Oh, and he he was did move able, it off a little bit. He was able yeah. to get it off there a little bit. Yeah. He really took a chance there too because it almost... Bumped. Yeah, he kind of did, you see? Yeah. But that's how important, you know, with the money on the line and shooting the 10 ball, you don't want to be on the rail. He got himself two inches here that well, made that it an easier game. shot. But you know, he's got he's a great... So even keeled all the time. But even being even keeled and being super polite and nice to everybody, he's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> you know, like... Oh, yeah. It, you see him online, like, razzing with people and stuff, and he's just... He's look a fun this. guy. Look at this. All so right. Far, what, I made the call, Jimmy. You did make the call. I'm now, telling this, you. This one ball, it's hard to tell. Like, If he puts a package on this, people better hit up the PayPal. Because <laughs> we've had literally one two-pack the entire time, and I called a package here before it even happened. Come on, guys. Help well, Jimmy and I get home. You know, I am not obviously rooting for any player but I am rooting to see some good pools so the, for, uh, for that agreed for that uh, reason I would like to see Oscar put some, put a package together yeah I wouldn't mind see Oscar do five or six and then 
Johnny come back and do five or six. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking was that one ball was... On Look, the he rail, got a so roll. He was going to have to do something. Yeah, he got a little roll there off, though. Well, five he ball. hit it good. Sometimes when you hit the balls good, good things happen. Yep. Exactly right. You make your rolls. You're just going to follow this two with top and get the three in the side. The question is the four, the five ball, though. Five balls. It's kind of a little bit of no man's land. Well, I don't think he's happy with that one. He can one. get underneath it and play it short side. It may go. It may even pass by, or he may just bump into the nine like he's yeah. looking at there. He just pointed as if he was taking the bump into the nine, which yeah, he might. looks natural. I think he's got to use a little left spin on this just to get that right angle to pop over to hit the nine. perfect. Yeah, he did. I mean, yeah, he did, he's not absolutely perfect on the five ball. He's awfully close to his work, but, but I mean, from where he was, that distance away trying to hit a ball just right, I think he hit it as good as he could possibly uh, He may try to drift over to the short spells. side here on the six. I kind of like short side more than trying to force something. What do you think, Jimmy? Yeah, I kind of agree. Because that's a pretty basic shot to just chop down on it a little and slide over by that between that first and second diamond. Yeah, if you just kind of actually aim right, like to pull it right to that that first diamond on the side rail. Yeah. I think you'll be in perfect line. Oh, we missed it. Oh, we missed it. Well, Johnny's got to feel pretty good to get to the table right now because it wasn't looking like that was going to happen for a while. All right, I blew my prediction too. That's really surprising the way you hit that ball. Yeah, well, you dogged it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that ball skid a little. That's the kind of shot that could skid on the other one. Well, he had, he had Johnny in a rough spot where he couldn't really do much. I think rather than risk doing something crazy, he just went ahead and rolled it and said, I'll take the cut. Because position on the seven is natural. He just needs to come down to this bottom rail and float it back up. Yeah, this set up real well for him here. So just make the ball and actually pocket speed. You know, well, not pocket speed, but you just want to come back down to this bottom rail and then back up. I mean, this is a huge difference. It could have been 2016. It was looking like it was going to be 2016. And now we're looking at... Really good chance at 1917. Wait a minute, it's not over yet. Nah, he's good. Well, he has a shot in the corner. That isn't where he wanted to be playing it, but he does have a shot in the corner. <clears throat> I mean, he could cut it in the side, too. Yeah, he's going to cut it in the side. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like playing this in the corner. Just a nice smooth stroke. Come off just before the side and come back out about 12 inches. But you gotta go with what you're comfortable with here and you gotta be committed to it. Well, I think what the reason yeah, he was considering the side is because now he does have to kind of pop this a little bit. Just like just that. Just like that. Yeah. Because he needed to get out far enough to clear the nine so he could see the eight. So tell you sometimes commentating makes me feel good about my game <laughs> when I say Johnny Archer should do this and he does it hey I know some maybe I'll play better probably not <laughs> I remember when I was a kid you know growing up I used to always after I would watch the pros play or I'd play in a pro tournament or something I always felt like I, I was playing better I could play better you know but I think the, the pros He's about three inches behind the head string here. Well, notice he has switched sides. So he, yeah. And he took a little off that break. He didn't start off just slamming it. He tried to be a little bit more controlled that time. Yeah. And 
but I think he got a little fortunate. I think he did hook him. He did. He may be able to see a sliver of it, but I don't know that uh, there's anything good. Yeah, he, he'll probably elect to push somewhere, although it's tough to find somewhere to push. He may push to a jump shot. Okay, he's going to go ahead and tie up the 3-7, or at least attempt to. That was what he was looking to do. I think Johnny will potentially pass this back. You know, this is that. This is a shot. Obviously, he can try to go rail first off the long rail, but then there's the yeah, shot where he goes off the short rail with a lot of left-hand spin and hits the one right on its right side and banks it out towards the middle and the cue ball comes back down by the nine ball. Let's see which way he goes. Oh no, he's going, he's going to try to, no, he might be I shooting my shot. He might be going two rails underneath, oh no, he's going one rail off the bottom yeah. rail, okay. Yeah, I think he wanted to hit that one thinner and send the cue ball up towards the nine. But yeah, he I left he us. called the nine ball at that speed, he certainly wasn't going to hit the nine ball, but he left Johnny a shot pretty much straight in. Yeah. And uh, since, he, since he did not tie the three ball up on the push, uh, Johnny does have a pretty good opportunity here to run out. Yeah, I think Johnny wants to get in a position where he can make the two and get the cue ball way down past the nine. So that way he's shooting a three coming back up table and doesn't have to flirt with that seven ball to get shape on the four. So here you got too steep an angle. Yeah, I think he... He won it. Ball, you know, and they told me that this ball plays is essentially identical to the Musa ball. I think it kind of popped up a little. You'll see that once in a while, like that skid where you yeah. go to roll it, and it just kind of pops up he and might, doesn't go anywhere. He might go with inside here and go three rails and try short side of the three. Oh no, he's no, he missed it though. I think that I do think that cue ball did that because I think I even heard Johnny say something about it popped, popped up on him. Yeah, so if I'm Oscar, I'm going to try to get this cue ball to track down between the 8 and 9 so I can make the 3 and go back up table. Because if not, you're going to have to play into the 7. It's going to be a sharper cut, but it'll work. sure if folks bought the pay-per-view today, everybody who bought it is tuning in about now. We're getting down in the nitty-gritty. Oscar's on the verge of 20. Johnny's sitting on 17. Oscar again playing for side pocket shape here. And really just pocketing this ball in getting a little angle on the five so he can work the cue ball up towards the middle of the table on the six and shoot the six on the side hit that ball he hit it he hit it with a lot of confidence I just uh, I know he missed that that uh, cut shot that he tried to make when we were thinking he was gonna break and run another rack but uh, that was a tough shot I just I still get the sense that uh, well of course as soon as I say that I was gonna say I still get the sense that Oscar's about to kick it up a notch Wow, this got tough, didn't it? Now, Jimmy, if he pockets this six and the cue ball goes straight across the table and ends up near that first diamond near the side, right where he's pointing now, he still can pocket the seven, and that's what he has to do here. So just rolls it nice and smooth in the side pocket, come across the table, and he'll, he has a small window, but he does have a window. Gotta go. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. Can you see it? You're I, kind of in line with it if you pop up over the monitor. He cannot make it. He cannot? He cannot. Well, he's gonna have to possibly kick under it and try to stick the ball there, though. I don't think he can make it. 
I mean, he might be able to put a little kung fu on it and twist it over there, but he really yeah, needs to going. twist it. Looks like he's kicking. Maybe he can see it. I didn't think he could. Yeah, kicking it. For the kick. Good result, though. I mean, yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He was playing underneath to the side cushion up to the top rail, trying to hook him behind the eight, but. He left the cue ball in a real good spot. Although, you know, Johnny does just have to try to roll this in. So if he makes if he makes the ball, position is built in. He's and if he miss if he misses fat, he's pretty much going to get safe if he just rolls it. You know, he'll leave a bank. What is, oh no, he's is he playing safe? Oh yeah, he's going to try to float to the cue ball behind the oh, eight he's ball. He's playing safe behind the eight. Okay. Watch this. This would be a great shot. Good recognition to see it too. He didn't get there though. Well, he left the bank. Although uh, I don't know if Oscar has a clear path to get to the cue ball past the eight with his stick to go ahead and bank it. If not, he's probably going to go ahead and duck. Yeah. Just two two rail the seven down behind the ten. Well, he could even one rail it. He could one rail the seven down to the down to the top rail or down to the bottom rail, kind of around the center diamond. Yeah. And then just float the cue ball back and potentially get behind the uh, the eight ball. That's true. I find these easier when you two rail them, just a touch wise. But he did do the one rail. Hit it a little soft though. Left a shot. Hits the butt of his cue against the ground out of frustration. Johnny's got a little tester. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that's getting in a groove though for Johnny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some yeah. people. Sometimes it, it is hard to come with a, with a tough shot when you cut up safety back and forth and safety back and forth and you finally get a shot. But it's a long, like a tester. Like, that was a long tester. All he could do was roll that cut in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes those shots are made a little more difficult when you've gotten in, settled into a little bit of groove of just bunting back and forth. You know, bunt, 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 bunt. Okay, now i got to come with this shot. Yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Not quite as rowdy in here today, Jimmy. We don't have Tedder over there playing for a thousand dollars a game. Yeah. No more subdued crowd. Well, it's kind of early for this place still. That's true. Well, Oscar looking to cross that 20 game threshold first. I gotta be honest. I, I don't really think that I look at it that way so much, like milestones and thresholds in a set. I, and I don't think that. Uh, I think maybe at one time I kind of did. But uh, I mean, the reality is, it's not over till it's over. And uh, so I don't necessarily think that like when Oscar hits 20 games that Johnny's thinking, oh shit, that's, tw oh, excuse my life, <laughs> he's thinking, oh, that's 20. Uh, I don't I don't necessarily think that that no, is, I mean, let's say you're really down in a set, like you're way down. Yeah, in that case, you might take a, a calculated risk. Okay, Oscar really pounded those balls. He did, and he's got a hanger on the one. He does. He can go rail first here. I think he can go to the side cushion first and uh, get up for the... I believe that is the two down by the six, right? The ten balls over here close no, to us? No, opposite of that. The oh, ten really? balls way up by the six. So where I'm sitting right now, let me put my glasses on here. 
You think he goes rail first and swings around the ten? Oh, you're right. I don't know, Johnny's saying something to him. I don't know what he's saying. So in that case, uh, if he can see the whole ball, he may just try to thin he's, it. He's he's looking at straight down. Yeah, yeah he's right. looking at coming between the seven and eight. I think it is funny because that 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 blue stripe on the ten ball is like facing directly toward us. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks totally blue. <laughs> True. Look at this. He hit that ball. I know it looks to some people watching it looked like an it easy looks shot, simple, but it's not. It's not. That he hit that shot with real precision to squeeze. But I mean, look, he had about seven inches of space to squeeze between the seven and eight. Yeah. And uh, that's he, a huge confidence builder for him right now, sitting on twenty and starting to run off that way. Yeah. I fully expect him to get out from here. to take the four in the side and I think he's just going to stop his rock and play the, play the combination. five six combination because he doesn't have much angle on this ball on the side So while part of me would like to, you know, have a set of these balls to play around with and all that, it won't bother me if I if I never have to commentate with this set of balls again. <laughs> Jimmy, have you ever uh, have you ever played balls out of order in an important game, important match? Uh, I'd love to say no, but <sighs> you got a little fortunate there. Yeah, you did. I'd, I'd love to say no, but the reality is I probably have. I, I mean, I don't remember. I'd probably try to forget it. Now I have. You know, it's kind of funny. I came to a, a tournament here, and sorry, I don't want to detract from the. You know, he does have a nice little shot here. I think he. The only. The only consideration he has here, if he tries to go two rails, is he wants to miss the ten ball. So because of that, he may draw this and just try to not really draw, but just pop off that bottom rail straight up. I yeah, think he's, he's not, gonna. He's not even gonna flirt with that. I think ten he's ball. gonna come back two rails like yeah, this, he's just like that. He's not even gonna flirt with that ten ball. Yeah. Now, he did get a little bit further than he wanted, but he's fine because the eight ball does go in that other pocket. So yeah. He's good. Uh, I played in a tournament out here years and years and years ago. It was a bar table tournament. It was back when they used to have the Hubler Cup. Jeez, I sound old. Anyway, <laughs> they used to have the Hubler Cup around the country. And I played it you know, one year here in Vegas, and uh, I was playing a guy. And actually, he was beating me pretty well. He was way ahead of me. And he almost shot the wrong ball, and I stopped him. I said, hey, you're shooting the wrong ball. And, uh... Oof. Oof. He wiggled it in. You know, it, a, he didn't hit confidence. it bad. That's no, he didn't thing. hit it bad. The, the pockets hit it bad. are so tight, he didn't hit yeah. it bad. Even though if it was like four and a quarter inch pockets, it wouldn't even look oh, yeah. like... It wouldn't it even look right like... Yeah, it just went right in. Uh, but anyway, so uh, yeah, the guy looked at me like he, he couldn't believe that I told him. And I guess, you know, he was probably at that time, it's the 80s, so he was probably a guy who was like, you know, player from the 60s or something, and probably that wasn't the way they did things back then. And I told him, hey, you're shooting the wrong ball. And he was totally taken aback, and he's like, well, thanks. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, he beats me that game, and uh, I ended up coming back and winning the set. Nice, nice shot. shot. Oscar just bared down. and. Uh, well, that was good, good, uh, good vibes from being honest. Well, what was funny about that is that... Uh, Wrong ball. And I was like, I can't be mad at him. I'm, you know, Ooh. actually, we... It was one of those tournaments where he didn't buy me a drink every time he saw me, <laughs> but I saw him in numerous times. He, he should have. <clears throat> yeah, numerous times after that, and we talked and chatted and stuff, and I knew it was my fault for shooting the wrong ball, but he definitely didn't offer any, hey, you're shooting the wrong ball. <laughs> 
Like that, that one probably cost me, <clears throat> the first level of money there was 400, and then it kind of went up from there, so it probably cost me a few hundred. It's going to push to the six here, it looks like. Uh-oh. I think that I rolled too far. Got, yeah, I don't think he got. He wanted to be closer to the rail. He didn't yeah. want to be right there. Um, it, yeah, I don't know if you noticed. I don't know if, it, if it's because it, just because Oscar's trying to change it up or try something different. Or if he's, like, starting to feel, you know, starting... It's like, you know, when the shark smells the blood in the water. But but he was he hit those balls with some authority, that break. He laid into it a little bit. Yeah. And because of it, he did lose the cue ball a little bit. But, again, I think he's starting to kind of feel it here. I think he, he smells the blood in the water. I think Johnny's playing the bank shot here. It's a straightforward bank shot. I mean, it's lined up on the perfect angle. Just hit it with a little pace. It's pretty much just have to hit it a little straight on. Yep. Sometimes those banks are just sitting so good, you gotta take it. I'm not big on shooting bank shots unless I have to. I joke around and say, if you're good at banks, it means you don't play good position. Jimmy, I don't know what happened, but uh, I never got that coffee you were supposed to order for oh. me. I know. She was supposed to bring it over, and I saw her put it down on the, on the thing, so if they try to charge us for it. Johnny, so, uh, Johnny did just come with a nice little back cut on that two ball in the side pocket, in a partially obstructed pocket, too. But he came up real far on this. This is uh, not where he wanted to be. He could potentially shoot it straight in. Let me look where he's got. He's got the six ball. So he'll go ahead and cut this into the side pocket. Try to get to this, uh, try to draw to this side cushion and back out for the six. Missed the ball. Yeah, Johnny, uh, I don't know. Johnny's starting to look kind of comfortable in his chair. That's not that's not typically a good yeah. sign when a player starts looking like they're comfortable. <clears throat> I really am yeah, curious he looks about very this jump cue. I really want to ask him what that jump cue is. He looks very frustrated here. Looks like he really only has to jump maybe half the ball, but he's awful close to it, so this would be a pretty spectacular shot if he can pocket it. And he's really given it a lot of thought too. Yeah, I think he's a little too close, a little too close for comfort. Of course, Junior Flores would just dart jump this ball. <laughs> then do a shot of Patron. Yeah. I wonder if Oscar will be aggressive here or just try to float the cue ball up by that cluster there. And This left hand side rail and back out just like nice that. Shot. Nice. So he does have a little bit of a of a window he needs to get on between the, uh, the ten and the eight. I mean, I'm sorry, the eight and the nine. From about the middle of the table, he's fine. He may try to roll into the ten. It looked like he was pointing at it. Like, just to really try to get up in there to avoid hooking himself. No, I don't think he's going to like that. He does have a shot, but he's straight jacked up. I don't know. I think he might be able to cue a little bit on the left-hand side, just because he has to cut the seven so much.
Oh, you're right. He does have a little bit of a... Okay. When it first landed... That was even was more like, than I thought he'd have. Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. That was more... He's able to get to the cue ball better than... shot there. Well, well it's starting to get away from Johnny again. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if this has played into it at all, but, you know, kind of what happened yesterday, like, toward the end, Oscar just came alive and played good, you know. I mean, not that he played bad the rest of the time, but, you know, both players made some mistakes just like they have today, uh, but toward the oh. end here. If that has, has played into, into what we've seen at all. Again, Oscar put, put a lot of, uh, you know, put a lot into that. You guys saw him body came way up. Yeah, 22-17. Mm -hmm. Oscar came over for a score check. Yeah, so Johnny misses that one ball, and uh, I think you're right, Jimmy. I think now Oscar really does smell blood, and uh, he came over and double-checked the score just now. Well, not only does he, he wants to close this out. Not only does he smell blood, it kind of feels like Johnny feel, senses his bleeding. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, uh -oh. Johnny's a great, great player, a great champion, so, you know, you think maybe that isn't the case uh, but everybody's human you know I wonder if Oscar can roll up on the back of this 10 he's got to make sure something gets a rail it looks like what he's doing yeah that was one of those where when you roll a ball like that with the other balls out there and, and the ball that you're hitting is going to hit one of those other balls, sometimes you have a hard time getting a rail because you yeah. want to... And, and you saw you hit it a little hard to make sure you did. Well, Johnny's had a couple shots, but they've been kind of testers, right? Like that one ball was kind of testy. Yeah. But, and then he had that seven ball that he missed that was testy. I mean, in his position right now where he's trailing and he's not feeling real, real comfortable, he hasn't been at the table a lot in the last, you know, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, you know, he'd really love to get... A nice open shot right now. To yeah, get he'd like to like, get like like, like ball in hand. <laughs> make Oscar kick, and Oscar like scratches off a kick like it's happened several times, <laughs> and then he can kind of start his run from scratch. Yeah, but now now would be a nice time to just get something like to get here, started. Get behind the six, there. maybe. Well, he's gonna make the six. Oh. Oh. I mean, it's uh, it's really tough when when you know kind of the momentum is against you. And the only few shots you get are these are these testy shots because it makes those testy shots even even more difficult, you know. Yeah. I mean, you'd really like to get a shot to, you know, just kind of get the feeling back, you know. Yeah. Well, he he might get it. Yeah, he's he's got the pink four ball. Now he. And I think he'll just come across the oh, table. I'm sorry, I was looking at the five ball. I yeah, he'll come across the table above that eight ball and maybe shoot the five ball down in the bottom left. Oh, he missed it. Did he miss it? Good. That's the question. I can't tell. I really can't tell. I can't tell from either angle. It's you close, know, and Johnny's giving it a good look. I'm sure if he can't see the whole ball, 
I don't think he's fully obstructed. Cross bank? No, I think he may jump it if, it, like, because I think if he can't see it, well, he can see it. He's shooting right at it. Because if he couldn't see it, I was thinking he was just barely hooked behind a piece of it. Yeah, you can see that all day. This is an interesting little cluster by the side pocket where it looks like Johnny can shoot straight into the five, off the seven, into the six, and then have the five just leak down towards the yeah, yeah. the corner pocket down here. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it just goes right off the seven into the six. So I think he just he just rolled this ball, and he can hold the cue ball up because he's gonna you know. I like hitting just a little stop shot and let the the five hit the seven, then the six, and let the five just trickle down. The seven's gonna go out of the way. The cue ball stop right there, and the five should go down towards that corner pocket here. He is gonna hit it with a little draw. And that was the only thing I was a little Ooh. bit concerned about, was potentially losing the five ball. It doesn't look like he did. He does have to back cut it, though. Uh, this is problematic. It obviously I goes, but it moved a little further than he wanted it to. Yeah, I don't know about this. I guess he can cut it. Yeah, it looks like he can. Yeah, he can cut it. I tell you, this oh, side, nice this side camera angle we have is really clutch. You get some nice shots with that, where yeah. you can see it a lot better than you can from the base of the table. That was a really nice little touchy shot to hold it up like that. Oh boy. It looked like the last couple revolutions of that took him closer to that eight ball. It looked like he was going to have about an inch to play with, maybe two. And it kind of well, curled over into that eight. Looking at the table, he does have, I don't know if he has a full inch between the two balls. As Keith would say, they ain't married, but they're living together. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Shot. Yeah, well done. That's hold on, hold on, hold That's on. What's happen, nine ball? Perfect. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny said, "Perfect." Knew what I was doing there. <laughs> uh. Get back in this. Really only down by four games. It's just that Oscar's only three away from when it closing it out. Yeah. Hey, uh, Johnny's got that one AirPod in. Is that so you can give him give him instruction? Oh, is that is that Johnny has that one AirPod in? Is that so you can like give him instruction on the DL? So Oscar's got a shot on the one. The two's in a lot of traffic, but if we look at the other view here, you see the two sixes. It's looking pretty good in the side pocket, so I wouldn't be surprised if Oscar plays for that two six. It may. It, by the way he played that, I think you're right. Not even touch the six here. Let's see. Oh, he can snatch it back like that, yeah. yeah, I don't think he's gonna have to hit the six. I'll bet you a beer. Oh. <laughs> well, we can't tell because he missed the shot. <laughs> well, Johnny does have a shot, but uh, he does have a shot, but it's nothing to be envious of. To, uh, around us walking around. I saw John Mora in here earlier. He needs to elevate and spear this in with some, with some uh, bottom left. Ben, don't move your head because he's looking right at it. Is he going to get behind the seven? 
don't know, but he might have got behind the six. Let's see. Yeah, he did get behind the six. Behind six. Back two or three. First game. Did you just tell him to do that through that AirPod? Did you say, "Fucking <laughs> behind the six"? <laughs> exactly what I said. <laughs> Well, it looks like we're in a safety battle here. Let's see who gets to the shot first. I think he's going to thin the left side of the two. Let's look at it from this angle. Thin the left side of the two. Really thin. Take the cue ball over by the nine. That's an option. Go aggressive. Still in this match. Don't get crazy, Ben. Well, he is playing Ben's something. Like, I think he's gonna jack up and spank Whitey. <laughs> you know, I will tell a funny commentary story actually when, when we have a good opportunity here. That involves Keith. Keith. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Jenny Ann's watching. <laughs> All right, so Jimmy's doing shots. Just one. No, no, I'm, not, I'm doing not my a, George Teachea. I'm just going to sip on it for my voice. We're going to drive back to Phoenix tonight. It looks like I'm driving the whole five and a half hours. No. What are you driving in reverse? I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not getting What are you it. riding the bike? <laughs> <laughs> five and a half. You stop seven times? Safety first. Okay, safety first. Safety first. No, Does that I'm mean you go seven miles an hour under the speed limit the whole way home? <laughs> Ben, I got a lot to live for. So he does. He, I think he, he would do just, the podcast if I died in a car accident. He can one rail thin this. He can one rail thin it and try to kind of put it up behind that whole seven nine or seven ten three. Oh, he's going the other way, putting the cue ball that way. Either. It's a good shot. Either or. Uh, so yeah, the you know uh, Aki stats. You know, obviously they've been doing that forever. Right, I'll, I'll get back to that after we see what's happening here in the game. Oscar hit it. I think he's going to... I think... Well, it was looking for a minute there like he was going to get rewarded and hook him behind the six, but... Johnny is going to go ahead and go for this. He just called it. Not good. That well, he does have some cover, too, and just in the event he were to miss it, he does have some cover, but... But missing was never an option, so he just went ahead and made it. Yeah. Uh, the four ball now. I don't. From here, looking at the monitor, it does not look like the four ball passes the six and the seven. What about what about if he plays this three rails and comes down between the five eight and around that corner to play the four ball on the opposite side? So you want to see it, Jimmy, like this? Yeah, that might be about his only option here. Other than the play safe, <laughs> there's that option. Man, I really wanted to see if he could get on that ball. So. You know what's interesting to me is is some of the shots that Johnny has gone for, and then some of the shots he's elected to play yeah, safe because he shot has selection. Gone, he has gone for some shots that were like, you know, not not terribly high percentage shots, but he went ahead and decided to take a swing at it. Yeah. Uh oh. There is a window to hit it. I mean, I would say he's certainly gone for some shots that were higher up on the difficulty scale than that three ball that he just played safe on. Yes, agreed. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable getting shape on that four ball, and that's why, you know, so thought he could pocket the three, but... Yeah, well, position to the, to the four was obviously really tricky. Um, but I think, I, I, mean, I do think you're right. I do think there was a shot to try to swing around and get short side in, in the uh, right-hand side pocket. Yeah. <clears throat> Johnny's kind of 
crouching down looking at this. Like, he might be able to fire this with a ton of inside English and twist it in. That'd be neat. Yep. So it must, pass, it must pass the eight. He obviously wouldn't have played that if it doesn't pass the eight. I don't know about that, Jimmy, because what else was he going to do? Like, he didn't have a lot of great safe options there, so maybe it was just he kind yeah, of felt like it, he had to make yeah, it. Yeah, but if it doesn't pass... If the four doesn't pass it, then he could play safe now, but he is playing it like it does pass. Yeah, plenty of room. Jimmy drinking water over here. <laughs> All right. Johnny Archer is saying, don't count me out yet. Okay. <laughs> I did a little networking while I was out of the loop. Oh yeah, what happened? Last 30 minutes or so. And I'm going to be streaming my first wedding. Oh really? In July, yeah. Live stream? Uh-huh. That's cool. It's uh, an Asian couple whose family can't get out here. Right? Uh, but the couple is here in the States. That's super cool. So rather than postpone anything or try to do something somewhere else, they've got this golf course that they've got their heart set on doing their wedding at. And I happened to run into management from that golf course who was informed that I was in charge of this streaming. And we did some talking and now it sounds like I'm going to be doing my first wedding. So I'm excited about that. Nice. Is that sponsored by Simonis? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one there. I'll have to uh, speak with some sponsors and see how that's going to work. But. Well, he's straight in. I think he'll just stay on top of this ball. I don't know why he would try to get underneath it. I mean, I guess he could, but it's... You know, we, it's hard to screw it up staying on top of it. Pool Player like Podcast that. might sponsor it if you can guarantee me some subscribers out of it. <laughs> we can probably talk about that. I don't like to make guarantees, but I can't absolutely guarantee. I need a sponsor so I can, like, be cool. It, it'll give me some street cred. I need some kind of sponsor. Hey, I gave you a business idea on the way up here. Well, that's true. I'm give me a chance to partner with me. I'm that call you on Monday. Okay. All right, Johnny's in good shape on the 10 here. I need some street cred. Johnny's been pretty deliberate running out this rack. I think he knows the magnitude of this. If they're willing to hook me up, i got to imagine they're willing to hook you up. In my uh, interview with Ralph Suquet that came out today, I told him, I said, you know, Ralph, the thing about you is if you look over at your match and the score's 8-1 to one, and you're just sitting there in the chair, nobody knows if you're winning or losing 8-1. to one. He made that. So Johnny pocketed the 10 ball on the break. It'll spot up. And it does have a... And, uh, so I think he's going to go, wait, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I do think he's going to try to nudge this three ball right here because it's perfect. If, if he can come back, hit the rail, and hit the three and nudge it out, it automatically gets in position on the two ball, and it puts the three ball in a position where it's makeable. Because as of right now, the three ball is in a really bad spot. I would expect to see him go ahead and try to nudge this ball. And if he doesn't hit it, if he doesn't nudge it, he still has a two ball, a shot on the two ball, and he's in no worse position than he would be anyway. Oh, he just went ahead and went straight up and back. I'm really surprised to see that. Because what are you going to do with the three ball from here? Well, I mean... I mean, I get, guess you're going to play if safe. Get, if you get above it, you can make it down the rail. you got to deal with the points, obviously. But, you know, um, back to what I was saying about Suke. Yeah. An 8-1, to one, can't tell if he's winning or losing. I asked him, I said, is that purposeful? And he's like, yeah, I think it is. He said, and I think it gives me an advantage because... If I don't show emotion, people kind of expect me to show emotion, like negative emotion. And it's almost like this feeling you get, and I've had it before, where if the opponent doesn't show emotion, negative emotion, then it's almost like, wow, this guy must be really good. He doesn't even care that he missed a shot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so 
So Johnny's gonna play some kind of safe here. Looks yeah, pretty yeah. straightforward. You're just gonna play he, the three down. He must down. have been thinner on that one ball than I was giving him credit for, because I thought he had a shot to to kind of try to come up and just bunt the three ball. I kind of like bringing the cue ball between the four and eight here. Normally you'd want to create as much distance as possible, but I think you can just control it better if you bring it just like this. Slow down. A little too, a little too much speed. You can see from the camera angle now that Oscar does have a look at this three ball and he is banking this ball. Man, it's... He played it two way. But it's almost like... I, know, I think you're going to see Johnny pull out the jump cue here. Yeah, he's got to jump this one. I think Johnny had the jump cue in his hand before the ball yeah. finished rolling. <laughs> you know that... that Talking about that, you know, not showing emotion and stuff. Uh, I mean, for me... And, of course, obviously, Ralph Ske is a great player. But I'm just talking about... I mean, obviously, we all have to do what we have, regardless of our level... We all do what we do for, for our own benefit, you know, mentally and stuff. But for me, I view it more of how it affects me versus my, versus what it, you know, what my emotions or what my behavior might do for my opponent. And I just notice for myself, uh, when I've let myself get emotional and stuff like that, the only person I'm hurting is me. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I try to stay even keeled for myself. I don't really, you know, depending on what, what signal it sends to my opponent, I, I really don't care other than the fact that I the fact that I know it negatively affects me. Looks like Johnny elected to not go with the jump cue here, and he's looking at a kick shot. You know, Jimmy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we really haven't seen many kick shots made in this match. Like, every no. once in a while you'd see one where... Look at this. Uh-oh. Yeah, Oscar kind of shrugged at that one, just seeing the result of it. Well, yeah, this isn't, this isn't any fun right here, is it? This is going to get fun if Johnny gets to 20. Looks like he's looking at a one rail kick. He does have a three rail option. Where he takes it up by that corner pocket and around the eight between the four and the eight, or five and the eight. And it looks like he grabbed his jump cue. He's gonna try to jump and kind of land on the corner of this ball. Well, if anybody can pull it off, it's, it's Oscar, he can obviously some of the stuff he could get, and I know that we haven't seen like anything spectacular with the jump cue out of him this this uh, match, but he's certainly capable of. of uh, he's, he's he's aiming to hit the three dare off. Dare I say a master with the jump cue? He's aiming to hit the three off the four, but I gotta think the scratch is in play. Made a good hit. Since Oscar forged ahead here by a little bit, it just kind of felt like the wind was out of Johnny Sales. But I tell you what, he's right in this thing. He is. Look, look at this. this. He's going to get right behind the seven. He Very the, nice. He put the double, double whammy on him. The double whammy on him. He's whammy whammied. This could have an added benefit too, the fact that he's making Oscar do all this kicking. You know, kind of get him out of that rhythm that he was in. Well, you know, once yes, Oscar does get a chance, there was a stretch there yesterday where Johnny rattled off like six wins in a row. He was down by four, and then next thing you know, he's up by two. Hmm. So it isn't like it's out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, it isn't like this is a foregone conclusion. What's going to happen now? That that turned out pretty nice. He left Johnny. He left Johnny a, a full ball, but he didn't leave him a offensive option. I don't think. Now, if this was like 1993, he might just jack up and spear this up yeah. into the <laughs> bottom left-hand corner pocket. And then run out. And run out, but... <laughs> of 
course, in 1993, the pockets weren't four and an eighth inches. <laughs> But you know that you know that that, like that talk about how uh, you know how the tables are so much tougher now. That isn't necessarily true because you used to also have to hit the balls a lot harder. Yeah. You know? So when, when you're like, four and an ace and you can baby the balls around, yeah, it's more difficult a little bit. But you know, if they're four and a half and you have to pound them around, that's pretty tough too. Yeah. You know? I kind of like banking this three ball off the bottom rail up by the nine ball and just floating the cue ball down by this corner pocket over here. Uh, the bottom left corner pocket, you see that shot, Jim? Yeah. So you just bank the three down off the bottom rail up past the nine. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And then say. float your cue ball somewhere down in here. I mean, even if you don't execute perfectly, your three is going to be over there in a bunch of traffic. So to me, I think that might be the best option here. Or the safest option. Oh, oh gee, he may have been going. like he's going for the spear shot. <laughs> he's hitting it with top. He said, "You know what he's saying to you right now, Johnny? Say this shot's above your pay grade, Joey." Yeah. <laughs> well, look, he ends up getting he's pretty clip safe the out of it. And get safe. Oscar gave a little head shake there, like, are you serious? <laughs> like, well, I think Oscar was really feeling uh, the momentum swing his way and was feeling that he was going to close this set out, and now, now he's kind of having to work for it, and I think that he's yeah. going, come on, give me an opportunity here, I can close this set out. Oscar's looking to kick here. Looks like he's looking to kick two rails. Yeah, two rail kick is tough because one, the scratch is in play there, and two, if you come in off that second rail, you could contact, the three could contact the eight. So he might come one rail at this. It's kind of hard to tell the way he's lining it up. Now he did go two rails and he missed it. I think that's the first kick we might have seen Oscar miss, or either, well, I don't know about either player, but I think that might be the first kick. Yeah, he's scratched on a couple kicks. He's scratched, but, yeah. but, he, but he's hit him. He's hit him, yeah. Well, the four balls, no real picnic, even with ball in hand. I mean, he may end up just go ahead and playing for the combination, or he might be coming down for the, for the four on the four side, the side <clears throat> which looks like what he's doing, looking at, he's so, looking at the ten ball. Slide the cue ball right down by where the 10 is. Yeah, he just wants to make sure that he comes down on a line that's between the 4 and 10. Looks like he's coming oh, he's in with high rail first. Yeah. Okay, he's going to the rail first. That ain't going to get there. No, he came up short. He'll have a cut shot here. And he still has a shot to make it, but now... The tricky part about this... Tougher. Yeah, the tricky part about this is if he cuts it and he's got to negotiate the 9 ball and still coming back for a shot on the... Five ball isn't easy. I think you gotta bank this ball, Jimmy. Yeah, and if he, yeah, and if he banks it, he's gonna be, he's gonna be long range on the. On I the really five ball. think you gotta bank this ball. Yeah, obviously, if the seven ball wasn't there, you just probably go three rails and play the, the four ball. Yeah, if you go offense here, I think you gotta table, bank but, it. Uh, But the only problem with the bank is he is going to leave himself long distance on that five ball. This might be crazy, but here's just a thought. What if you banked it towards the bottom corner and slid the cue ball over into the five? 
kind of nudge it down to the corner, and you got the six there for cover, should you miss it, right? And if you miss it, you want to miss it short, obviously. See what I'm saying? I don't know if he's got that angle. So he called bank it right here, slide it. Yeah, he's banking on the side. Yeah, I don't know if he has... You know, when he lines up these banks, it looks like he's lining them up short. Have you seen that? I've seen that a couple times. I'm sure he's got a system to it, but he hit that good. Well, he hit it as good as you could hit it. He really did, because uh, he kept control of the cue ball pretty well. He could have ended up waiting way down here and had an even longer distance shot on the five ball. It's going to be real. What, what's going good about it, though, is that the six ball is right there, so he really just needs to pocket this ball. If yeah, he can come back a couple inches, it'd be great, but just, he's got the six ball in the side pocket right there. Just needs to stay down. Good just shot. Just like that. Looks like Johnny's got a really good chance to get the 20 here. I wish the stream, I wish there was chat because we could ask. I'm wondering if they can hear this music. bit of an angle. Southern view shows it well, better. If he doesn't have enough angle to uh, go to the rail and come across for the 10 ball in the pocket that it's closest to, he does have an angle to where he can kind of draw straight back off that rail and shoot it short, short side. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and punch it and, and play it in the pocket that's natural. Uh-oh. Okay, I think he's good. Yeah, he's good. He contacted that second rail a little higher than he wanted, I think, but uh, it turned out okay. But he's in good shape. Johnny asked if he could clean the cue ball. Ask Oscar's permission. Oscar said yes. Folks are messaging me. They can hear the music. <laughs> they, they're asking if we take requests. <laughs> we got we got baby got back right now. How could you request anything other than that? Johnny Archer gets the twenty. Look for that one in the side here, guys your best chance on this side break usually. Oof, almost. Johnny said that was his best break tonight. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, would, I would disagree. There was a there was a couple that I thought he hit real well. One I thought he hit real well and he didn't make anything, but it, 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 he still hit it real well. But you could see he had some power in there, so obviously he's pretty comfortable off that, that side yeah, cushion. Kind of get a good look at how close this cue ball is to the one ball here and what Oscar's dealing with. I think you just thin this ball and go over towards this corner pocket. Unless he's just going to try to... Maybe he'll kick at it hard to get your tip out of the way if yeah. you're so close to the rail. Honestly, I think I just thin the left-hand side of it, put the cue ball over by the corner pocket, and let the 10 be your blocker. You got a two-game lead. You only need three games to get there. Make Johnny make the mistake is what I would do. Here he goes, he's kicking it. 
Man, you gotta watch this double hit. I think he double hit it. Yeah, he did. Well, huge opportunity for Johnny Archer here. He's got ball in hand to start him off. Looking around for problems, I guess the obvious one is the seven ball. Doesn't really have a pocket, but the location of the six ball, if you could shoot that six in that, change the angle here, shoot the six ball on the top left. And you might be able to work beneath the seven. Well, this is about to be a real nail biter here. Potentially. So, what, what does he have here? He has the. Uh, no, I the think next Johnny. Ball is I think. Three ball? Yeah, I think he's going to try to hit the seven on this. Or no. It's the oh, two the ball. Oh, the the two ball. I'm yeah. Sorry, I didn't see the seven ball. I don't really understand so what, what he was he doing there. He was there. trying to go to the other side. I don't know. I thought if when he lined it up there, I thought, oh, maybe he's going to come through and try to nudge the seven. What? I but have no idea what he was doing. That's really I odd. He's going to roll up on top of the ten ball, but I have no idea. Yeah, that was different. Well, I mean, I do have an idea what he was doing. He was he was trying to come up and play the two ball in the in the lower left hand corner pocket, but. Uh, With ball in hand, you got to do better off that one ball, I think. Yeah. I mean, sure, he played safe here. I mean, here, it's but really hard, you know, at, say, my level to question. Oh, oh got oh, it. Look at this. To got question. It. Uh, nice shot, Oscar. Johnny Archer's shot selection. But, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't a big fan of that, the way he played that one ball. I think it's going to cost him, too. I thought he was going to try to really spin it and get over here and hit the seven and then have that shot on the two in the other pocket. Well, Oscar does have some work. But, uh, I think he's in great shape here. He's got a really nice angle on this four ball to work it up table so he can shoot the uh, five ball in the top right. And that frees up some options there. Yeah. Like here... If he lays perfect, he can make the five and play into the seven. Maybe give it a little bump. I don't know, though. I don't think he can risk going into the seven here because uh, he could end up really bad on the six. I think he's going to have to play the, se the seven ball up, you know, down table in this yeah. lower left hand or lower it looks right like the corner pocket. It looks like the six passes the nine, Jimmy, and he might be looking at that. So pocket the five, then pocket the six in the same pocket. Yeah, he's looking at that now. Roll, and then roll forward and play the seven back down table like you were saying. Yeah. I mean, if he gets straight on the seven down table, that's ideal, because look at the position of the eight and nine. Right. I mean, it's like tic-tac-toe from there. So he elected to play the six on the side. And he stayed on the right side of it so he can stay down below the seven. It's just speed's going to be important here. I think he'll draw to this top rail to kind of hold it. Yeah, I, I do. I think he's going to try to... Rather than coming forward and having to have perfect speed, it's almost like if he can draw it down to that top rail, it can kind of better control the... I don't know if he's going to hit it hard enough to go to the bottom rail and back up, or if he's just going to try to stun, stun over a little position with with uh, with speed control. Now I think he's coming to the rail. Now he's looking at going into it. Now if he could go into it over the top of it and clip the uh, the high side of it, Gosh, the be side scared that we're of, at. I'd be scared of floating behind that nine. He's got to hit a good shot here. Well, good thing is position's built in, so he really just needs to roll this in. Yeah. 
Oscar just needs to uh, stay down on this ball, make a smooth stroke, and just roll it in. This is why he's Oscar Dominguez and plays for thousands of dollars. Shots just like this and under you pressure. Notice how I say that that's all he has to do? It's really easy for me sitting at <laughs> I've never mic. missed a shot from the booth, Jimmy. Yeah, just all he has to do is make a tough shot into this four and eighth inch corner pocket. For a lot of money. <laughs> he split the Got pocket. It. Got it. Man, did he hit that ball good. He split the pocket. Well, this is, and he's in perfect position. He doesn't have to move the cue ball much right here. He'd like to be basically on a line that's exactly between the eight and nine right now. Man, because think about the draw to that side rail. Think about the turn of events here. Oscar fouls on the one ball. Johnny has ball in hand, and Oscar steals this game from him. He gets bad on the two. He plays safe. Oscar kicks the two in and runs out. I mean, that's to go up 23-20 instead of 22-21. That's huge. The magnitude of that game is huge. Hit it, hit it a little gingerly. Yeah. But he gave, him a, he gave himself a shot on the 10 here. He didn't want to do anything crazy. Not a lot different than a lot of the breaks that we've seen over the last <laughs> yeah. two days where... I was just thinking the same exact break. I was thinking how to put into words what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking Johnny's probably going to just play safe here by thinning the one and going back behind the 4-2. He could try to play the one down table. I'm not sure how much real estate he has next to that. He's looking at that now, kind of banking the one down behind the 6-9. Taking the cue ball back behind the four, possibly. Or the five, sorry. Oh. I don't think he got there. What do you think? He left him, he left him a ball. A full ball to hit. You see, pocketing it and getting position is uh, not an easy task. But. Well, if he crosses it, comes down. Let's look at it from this way. If he crosses it, comes down off this bottom rail and way back up the table, there's a ton of traffic over there that he's likely to, just like this. He put a little more inside on it than I thought he might, but he got away with it. Yeah, there was so many good things that could happen by crossing that ball. in that spot now where he can pull out the jump cue, but I don't think the one passes three. It's close. Let me look at it. Oh yeah, it does. The one does go. Yeah, I kind of like the jump here. I mean, the reality is kicking at it, it, it there isn't like there's a whole lot of great things that can happen kicking at this ball. Oscar gets to the shot first. I think he can hit this with a nice smooth shot with a lot of low right and pull the cue ball way back here yeah, past I think the seven. He's good. He just wants to hit the rail about where he put his where he put his cue right between that uh, second and third diamond on that right hand cushion. Uh, that'll put him in perfect line coming into the two ball. It's got to hit a good shot. It's a pretty sharp cut. 
So he's really got to throw this and spin it with a lot of right. Keep that jump cue out, Johnny. Yep. He actually has it right in his hand. I'll tell you, when you're as tall as Johnny is, the jump cue looks even shorter than it actually is. <laughs> it's like... Well, it doesn't want to hit this ball too full, obviously. Like that. Kind of wanted to hit it a little thinner and get back up the table. I know that's nitpicking on, on a jump shot, but... So he'll just bank the two out here and float the cue ball over behind the five. Out there. That one pretty good. Did he get him behind the four ball? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He may have just enough where he can try to spin this a little bit. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and just try to. are sitting pretty nice here. Two to the three to the four to the five. And really, if he stays on the five, high on the five, he can draw out of there two rails for the six on the side. Everything kind of... It's kind of a little... I don't want to say it's not like a complete road map, but they all do kind of lead together, lead to each other nicely. It's going to be a... Yeah, he's playing for the pink next, so it's looking great here. Yeah, he can either stay on top of the five or get, get below it, and he can get, get to either side pocket, depending on, on whether he decides to stay high on the five or get underneath the five. I think I'll stay high here. One of these. To see him draw draw two rails out of here. Yeah, these play are the six ball on the side. These are set up when they're laying like this. This is perfect for that two railer and trigger. Nice shot on the six here, just like this. I say you just roll up an inch or two, and then that way you can just. Slide across on the seven, you're in great shape. Barring something unforeseen here, it looks like Johnny's gonna pull back to within two. And how big is that last game? Man? Jeez. Pretty big. Well, every game is big right now. I mean, Johnny had a ball in hand on the one. Yeah. I just can't. I, uh. I would like to, you know, honestly, he had ball in hand and I looked away for a minute. I'm going to go back and watch I, that game. I would love to look see that shot again to understand. I'm for sure going to go back and watch that game because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what he was thinking from that one to the two. Right. He didn't even, it, the weird part is he didn't have like this disappointed look on his face after the shot. You know, it's like, it wasn't like, oh, I screwed up. So I would kind of expect to see him draw to the side rail. 
rather than try to flow. Well, I mean, he could just roll it down. Yeah, he's going it high. Too. That's a, you know, float it down. Yeah, that's a good yeah. shot. Oscar's not conceding this one. Well, we're looking at 23 to 21. Hey, at this point, he really only has to hit a few good breaks if he could find a way to turn it on. Four ball, or five ball. Oh, look at the one ball. <laughs> and Johnny's ecstatic, he made a ball. And Oscar's sick right now. <laughs> like, of all the times to make a ball, now you're gonna make a ball. <laughs> Does the, I don't think the five passes the six. It's Johnny's, but, Johnny's uh, hooping it up, people are like smiling and cheering, and I looked over at Oscar and he looks like he just lost his dog or something. Not very happy. No. He was, uh... We did. <laughs> <laughs> we were... Johnny just spun around and looked at us and said, Hope y'all got that one on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's... Oh, look at this. Oh, no. Oh, he's going to get a little jelly roll. Not a great jelly roll, but I think he might pull out the... Uh, because he wants to probably might have to put a little something on this ball, a little, little spinach, so he might be going for the extension. No, although I think he much, can reach although this Although he's one. much taller than me, so he can probably reach this. I'd be reaching for the extension. Jimmy, this is one of these where you can't really afford to go to the rail here. You just got to just pull it back a couple inches, give yourself a little more real estate off the rail, I think, and shoot from there. I don't really see how you can chance missing this ball. Yeah, kind of like that. He had a little, a little straighter angle than I thought. Well, now he's he's in good well, shape. Well, look over I here. Mean, he's he's the, the thing is he's got a good angle. He's he's not as close to the ball as he'd like to be, but he's on the angle that he'd like to be because that that five ball I don't believe passes the six, so he needs to come to the side cushion, one rail out for the for the five ball in the upper right hand corner yeah. pocket. Let's check this out. So he, he's on a, he's in a good line. He's just he's just a little further away than he'd like to be. Hope you got that on video. Oh. oh my goodness, and he missed it. Oh, he was coming back. Yeah, the see, side. you know, okay. I kind of like your shot a little better there, Jim, because it just feels like you got to do less. You know, just a nice stun shot across the table where he kind of puts some draw on that ball. And I mean, certainly getting down there for the for the four in the side pocket, you don't have to be as precise with the position. That you have a little bit, you have more uh, margin for error in terms of speed control. Oscar's gonna thin the side of this ball and go back up table. Hit it fat, and he's gonna. This is not gonna work out for him. Well, now that changes it. Now he has a shot, and the four ball does pass the six now. Yeah. Johnny's gonna take a break because there's some. There's some, like a recreational player coming up trying to grab. There's a, a rack of house cues right there by where Johnny's <laughs> stuff is, and he's coming over there sifting through all the all the house cues. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my goodness, it's pretty funny. Wouldn't be as funny to me if I were the one playing, but it's certainly funny for me watching. got a videographer here taking video and and like Johnny literally walked up and poked him with his cue and said I see you <laughs> telling him this oh, is he's, he's right in line with Johnny I don't yeah. think this guy uh, you know I don't think this guy is much of a yeah, yeah I don't think he knows about like pool a, right I don't yeah. think he's much of a knowledgeable uh, spectator I mean, he will. felt perfect on this didn't he This is turning into a nail biter. Johnny's shaking off the nerves a little. I hope that videographer got that when Johnny walked up and poked him with the cue and told him I can see you. <laughs> that would make an interesting video at the end.
this is looking really good for Johnny to pull to within one here. What a nail biter we have, Jimmy. Yep. We're looking at uh, 21, 22 here in a second. See, 18, so that's 40. 25, 23 is 48. Wow. Mendoza's doing math here, guys. Good. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. So they've played at this point 98 games. Okay. Yeah, I think he's doing something a little different here. Can't blame him. Oh, he missed hit the one ball, or, or the cue ball, I'm sorry. He hit it with a bunch of follow. Well, not going to get one, and he's going to leave Oscar a shot. And he's going to leave him a shot. No, I think it's the two ball right next to it. Yeah, the two ball is right next to it, and I do believe the five passes the nine, although it's tight. Uh, I mean, four and Nathan's man, pockets, it's really if it, tight. If it obstructs it at all, it's tight, right? But it's I do think really, really tight. The, uh, the difficulty will be on that shot is that he's likely to have to hit it with a little bit of pace to get back down for the six. I just stood up and took a good look at it, Jimmy, and I believe the five does pass the nine, but Oscar just ran into a different problem now. He got, he got a little flat on this two ball, and now the three ball's way down table. He might have to consider a rail first shot here, give you a good look at it there. I'd have to consider the rail first here because your cue ball is going to go way down table here. The only thing that could really go wrong with it is if you hang the two. But he's not going to do that. He's going right into it. Watch the scratch. Look at this. Oh. Jeez. Okay, well, he Man. does have a ball. He can hit it. He came off that point and you know, here's so here's a shot. Well, he can that two rail this ball. He he's calling him the side. Ball. He's playing safe. He's playing safe. He's going to two rail it and, and try to snug it up behind the 9 4. Oscar's <laughs> really a little frustrated with his play right Johnny's, now, I think. I have to think. Johnny's going to take a look at this and then, and then potentially jump it because if he if he clears the five ball, yeah, you're right. He does have a shot at the three ball. You're right so about I think that. He Let's may, he look, may at look at this and decide to jump this. That's a good point, Jimmy. If he gets over the five, well, he's going to have to kick at it. He what about the it. eight though? Is the eight in the way of pocketing the? No, I w I just took a look at it a second ago. It's not in the way, but he he may not like the jump because of the risk factor. Because uh, even if he if he hits it, there isn't a lot of cover. If he kicks at this, and he can somehow send the three ball up table, and leave the the cue ball down on that end of the table, he, might be able he has to an opportunity for safe. Like see where he's pointing now. If he comes in two rails, he might be able to get that three. Yeah, if he can cut, come in two rails and hit the right hand side of the three ball, like that, yeah, really hard though. Potentially a little too full. But look, the six is going to provide cover. Look at this. Yeah, I Look thought he hit it way too roll. hard, and uh, turns out it worked out. Tell you what, nothing's easy at this point in the match. Every time these guys come to the table, even if the table looks like it's it's sitting well, like it's not easy. Johnny's really taking some time to stand over this and consider it. You know, since I, I put my glasses on and I'm looking at the table through the window, I can actually tell the 10 ball from the 2 ball a little easier now. 
Oh, he's he's reaching for hell jumpy. This is difficult. He called the side, this but I don't think that ball banks in the side. He's got to get the ball up and down because he doesn't want the cue ball like. Yeah, see, he's got quite a bit of distance, distance between the yeah. six and the cue ball. I see that. So if he comes down like right on top of the three, he's got a pretty good chance for the cue ball or the three ball to go off the table. So he needs to get this ball up and down onto the table. I really kind of like the kick here and come in behind it and kick it over towards the nine five. But you know the two rail off the top rail, off the long rail, and kick it over by the four knot or five nine and. Your cue ball has a chance of stopping right there by where the four ball is. I have to admit, I, I think I He's prefer looking at the, that right now. I think he heard me. I think I prefer the some kick option here more than the jump, but uh, but it's hard to argue with uh, someone who's had Johnny's success in this sport. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to. I hope nothing that I've said this weekend has in any way <laughs> uh, been derogatory to these players. I have a great deal of respect for both of them. They're amazing players. Just trying to give my two cents and call it like I see it. Oh, I'm bumping the, bumping the mic here. See, he, yeah, see, he has to elevate really high because you gotta he, really, need, yeah. he needs to get this ball down on the table. Man, and that, that was, was really tough. the problem is that he needed to... Uh, he needed to get it up high and then, and then clear the six ball on the path down because mm -hmm. if he could, you know, cleared it to where the cue ball was at its apex just above the six ball, he's going to come down right on top of the three ball and then fly off the table, potentially. But, uh... Yeah, I still like the... I, I think I still like the kick there. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, but... Yeah, I mean, for myself, simply because of, you know, my, uh prowess or lack thereof in the jump cue, I certainly like the kick there. Um, you know, honestly, between the shot that he kicked at on the three ball earlier when he had a jump over the five ball, that was one I kind of, I kind of liked the jump on that one, but yeah. even with my feeble jump skills, although I do have a Q-Tech Propel, so it makes my feeble jump skills look, look not so feeble. Well, the, the, the pocket that he has to shoot the five in just got a lot bigger because now he can just cinch it past the, the nine ball. He doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball because the six ball is hanging in the pocket. Oh yeah, good point. He must not have liked it at all though. No. He put to go short side. Now what's going on here? He you know, must not have passed. It, His own thing, I can think. It may. He may have a shot at it in the side pocket. He's giving us a good look. We're gonna go over to the other view. Well. From back here where we're sitting in the booth, it, it looked like the five ball passed the nine ball. Uh, clearly Oscar didn't like it. He tried to get short side on the five ball. Yeah, that's touchy. If he tries to go off the right side of that four, I don't like it. It's real tough. I think Johnny's got to be feeling pretty good about life right about now. Yeah, I think he... About 30 seconds ago, it looked like Oscar was going to be getting to the hill. Yeah. If you're Johnny, you're probably really excited. And even with Oscar at the table to play safe, it's not even a great did he, safe. Did he yeah, he's cutting yeah. this ball. Well, he Check might be at an angle where... where 
shooting at the four ball or in the direction he's shooting at it, it might it might throw it a little bit into the side pocket. So. I don't think he needs to elevate though, because he's just hitting the side of it. I'm curious why he's elevating. You know what I mean? Like he he's not shooting into it at all. Right. Maybe he's doing that to kind of uh, st stun the path of the cue ball a little bit. Yes. Well, this is going to be what he decides. It, he's going to thin the left side of this ball. And he's going to head down by the corner pocket. Use the 10 as a blocker, I think. Going back to this shot, if he, if he were to jack up and hit it the way he was going to, I think the reason he would be jacking up like that is because if he didn't jack up, he would have to hit it with enough speed. He's going to he's gonna fly the cue ball around the table yeah. versus if he jacks up and stuns it, he can control the cue ball a little bit. Yeah, you're probably right. He's taking a lot of time on this shot, isn't he? Yeah, oh, look yeah. at this. He's looking at the possibility of thinning this ball. This is tricky. Sure is. Going one, two rails between the eight and the seven. But imagine if he executes this. <laughs> what a shot this would be. Stick him right behind the seven here. This would be insane. I think that's trying to do too much right here. You got a one game lead, you only need two games. Be able to see. It looks like from this angle that it's not frozen. No, it's not. Well he's he's back to he's back to looking at the uh, he's, he's playing on the side. He's back to looking at the side pocket. I tell you at this point, Jimmy, I've seen a lot of pool, I've caught a lot of pool matches. If, if he shot straight into this ball and they asked me to watch the hit, I would decline. <laughs> I was thinking, get somebody else. <laughs> I, w I agree with you. I wouldn't call it. Those are the worst, and they always call you over for those, you know? Yeah. Let's see, Let's see if he does it. Oh, cue ball. Oh, my gosh. Cue ball helps it, and then... Oh, insane. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Johnny says, <laughs> I got say? he says, I got lucky and unlucky in one shot. He said what? He said, I got lucky and unlucky in one shot. <laughs> wow. It's more like I got unlucky and lucky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he said he got lucky and unlucky in one shot. Oh, yeah. But somebody, I guess, depending on your point of view, Depends on your perspective. Wow. I predict uh, Oscar's going to take a break after this game, regardless. He just took off his gloves, and I think the prospect of this being 23 all, he's going to go splash some water on his face. Well, it's all dependent upon him getting on this seven ball. He did. And how he gets on the seven ball. Well, straight yep, over the eight. Himself straight jacked up. Wow. Wow. That's unreal, isn't it? it? You know what? Even with ball in hand, though, it wasn't super simple to get on on the seven because it's again, it's one of those shots that's like completely dependent upon speed control. I mean, he needed to be out slightly. He, he came he came over about four inches too far. You might you might see him go to the extension here. No. Nope? Okay. He's tall. I'm short. I think every I think everybody needs the extension, and it's only because I need the extension. <laughs> You're not even that short, Jimmy. Five seven. Maybe. Yeah, right around there. I think I, w I used to be five eight. I might have shrunk an inch. <laughs> I think Johnny's upset again that the guy's moving. The eight ball does pass the ten, right? Oh yeah. That is what he's looking at. We'll see if Johnny can can buckle down here and make this ball. Got it. And he did. <clears throat> well, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, folks. You ain't kidding.
Maybe Johnny took just an extra second getting over to get down on the ball to give Oscar an opportunity to concede it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Johnny is... Uh, Ben looks like he's in deep thought. I am in deep thought. Uh, we're at the seven, seven hour and 25 minute mark for this match. If I'm not mistaken, as far as audio, video, web, and our pay per view package is concerned, I believe we can only stream in eight hour increments. I may have to. Oh boy. Should this go a second set, uh, we may have to end the stream and then restart it again. You'll still be able to log right back in. Your credentials will still be the same. Everybody will still have the same access. Uh, but we may have to start a new stream for the day once we hit the eight hour mark. We're at 7, 20, 7 hours and 25 minutes right now. So we'll see how these next few games play out. If Johnny wins this match, we're gonna have to do a restart on the stream. If Oscar wins the match within the next 35 minutes, we won't need to do so. So we'll see what happens, but I just kind of want to give you guys a brief heads up. Wow. Well, Oscar rifled the combination in, didn't leave himself a shot. He's going to have to play safe. Uh, six balls blocking a, a bank. I'm not really exaggerating when I I believe they've been averaging over these last few games about 10 minutes a game, maybe 8 minutes a game. So. No, you are right. If we could be right up against the hill, hour hill You may have to restart it before the Hill-Hill game. That'd be sick. Oscar laid down a nice shot, but I think the six ball is the six. No, the six ball's not dead. No. Oscar did lay down a nice shot, banking the one ball into the six, using the six ball to stop the one ball right there, and then uh, planting the cue ball down here behind the seven and nine. Just took a look. Johnny is full ball hooked behind the nine ball. Yeah, there will be no quick decisions being made these last few racks. You can believe that. I'm not sure Johnny might not be uh, might be looking for some opportunity to tie something up and give up ball and hand, make some kind of mess over there with the 10, 8, 4, 7. It's kind of um, already a mess over there. It's already kind of a mess, and you could probably make it messier. Um, I think that's possibly one one option he's considering. I mean, obviously, if he kicks at it, he can kick at it, but it's likely that uh, there's nothing to give any cover there. Um, I'm interested to see what he does. He's definitely thinking about it. Weighing his options here. And yeah, it looks like he's thinking about banking the two over into that mess. Well, that wouldn't be a bad play. Um, Either that or pushing the seven up by the point there next to the eight. I don't know though. I mean, the problem with kicking at the one and hitting it is you really can't guarantee you're not going to leave Oscar a shot. But just with the traffic that's out there. With the way every game has gone, yeah. just as a sp from a spectator who's watched every single game this match and yesterday, I would feel better about it if he tied something up. Really? Yeah. Because I was going to say, with the way the balls are laying, if he kicks at the one and gives up a shot, the way all the games have been going, I don't think, I don't think you're not going to get back to the table. It's just the way the games have been going. So here, what you've done now is you've opened up an opportunity for Oscar to put you on a second foul. And with all that traffic out there, it'll be pretty. I think. It could potentially be difficult. To, well, of course, it's always going to be difficult, but it would be difficult to three foul him. You know, here's a shot. He could bank the one out and draw the cue ball straight back towards the five ball. Well, 
if he yep. shoots this, Johnny's going to want to watch the hit for sure. Yeah, he's already had one where he double hit the cue ball in one of these. But you know what I mean, Jimmy? If he lines up the yeah, one... I, I see what you're talking about. Like he's going to bank it down table. If he shoots this, uh, no, he's not going to shoot that. I don't think he's going to shoot that. You know, he's just the playing. other option. He's just playing with our emotions. Yeah, the other option though is put the cue ball like right there, but thin the one on the left and come all the way down back behind the seven, where you free up the one. Well, where he's putting it, he's just gonna barely bunt it and go forward to the side rail. Yeah, I don't know. Well, now Johnny, I think Johnny can see a piece of it to thin it. I mean, certainly the kick isn't difficult. And if he digs into the rail, if he digs into two rails, he may be able to pocket the six ball. I can't tell how much distance is between the one and the six. But do you see what I'm saying? If he were to kick into it two rails. Yeah. But, uh... You know, when Johnny was faced with the last shot he was faced with, I, I do say that I, I liked uh, him trying to make the layout w even worse than it is and giving up ball in hand. What'd you say, Jim? Well, like I said, uh, when when Johnny was faced with his last shot, I did I did like the option of just trying to make the, the rack tougher than it was and giving up ball in hand because of the way that it's been going back and forth. And just the, after watching just how every game has gone, I felt like if he did that, there was still going to be a lot of pool left to play in this rack. Versus if he kicked at it and something stupid happened, something unfortunate happened, you know, he could find himself on the worst end of it right away. I mean, I get, there's a real touchy little shot here, I guess, if you just thin the one and try to lay it right on the rail, where you wouldn't leave a billiard and you wouldn't leave the possibility of making the one, but I don't know. Yeah. Look, he's, I think he's going to thin the one and try to come over and play the six with the cue ball. What if he did that? Thins the one, takes the cue ball over to the rail, comes back, tries to pocket the six. Is that possible? Is he going to do that? I don't know if that's what he's playing. He might have called it as a just-in-case yeah, like, thing. I think that's what he did. Okay, well, that is the, that's the two ball down there by the one ball. Yeah, it is. The eight ball is blocking the side pocket, although it's not a difficult combination. Yeah, I mean, I don't uh, think you really want to just... shoot that combination because if, if you don't get the two to end up just right on that, it could float down by, by the 10 or... I actually like the 2-4 combination better where you make the 1 and just roll across and shoot the 2-4 combination. Kind of like this. Yeah. He got there. The, uh five ball obviously is well we're going to see how he navigates if, if he gets to there uh, we'll see how he navigates this five ball being in such close proximity to the ten ball it's a good shot there Hit that nice well I mean there is an offensive shot he gets up to the middle of the table for the bank yeah that's what he's playing for How does the how does the four ten off the eight look? Just looking at that now. I think the bank is uh, a simpler shot to get to. Actually, simpler it, it's definitely simpler to get to. But if you did get to that four ten eight, that is definitely in play. Just the position of the eight is perfect for that. Actually, but he is playing for the bank, and he called it quickly. And he will. Uh, He's got an angle now where he can just lay this cue ball on the bottom, on the uh, top rail. Yeah. So if he misses uh, the bank, if he happens to miss the bank, he should leave Johnny, a good bit of distance. Johnny probably yeah. is not going to be looking at a, a hanger unless he gets a double point. 
Yeah. This is a bank you expect uh, a player of Oscar's caliber to make um, with a fairly high percentage. Uh, Over 90, I'd say. Got it. Dead center on that. Yep. So now he just has to, you know, kind of with some uh, right hand English sneak between the uh, 10 and the 9. Because it looks like he has the angle to do that. Hit it with. Uh, if he doesn't have enough angle on the 6 ball to do that, then he'll have to come. No, I think that's the shot. Uh, look, it actually looks like he's coming out. Yeah, he, he may avoid trying to go between short the, of the nine, and the nine, yeah. come short of the nine if he doesn't have the... Speed is really game. crucial here. Yeah. Well, he just needs to make it. Position is uh, built in. Just roll it in. Yeah, he rolled a little further than he wanted on that, but you can't take a chance of getting behind that nine. No, well, I actually think he's, he's, like, perfect. He doesn't really... I mean, perfect from where he was. Sudden movements, Jimmy. Nope, I'm not moving. I see him uh, <laughs> looking right down at this. This is just kind of like a center left hit and roll it. Got it. Good shot. I bet you he let out a deep breath on that one. Oh, yeah. I think the 10's still got to get played up in the corner. Yep. Up or down. Nice shot. I see it a good. Yeah, that was nice perfect. speed. Now he's in perfect line to just, just he can get dead straight on this ten ball down here in this lower right hand corner pocket. He is not rushing into anything here, even though this looks pretty straightforward. He's really giving this a lot of thought. Well, he just wants to make sure he gets gets right where he wants to be. And he is. Yeah. So it is looking like Oscar's gonna be the first to the hill in this race to two. There's no way he wants and to play a third the ball set. Is great. Yeah, and he's got a shot. Ball might hang up right there. He's got a shot. Oh geez, it's all his to win right here. Look at this, and that might be his best break of the match. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. He made three balls on the break. One ball just tracked straight back. Cue ball tracked straight back. The uh, dare I say that that's the best break we've seen. It may be, yeah. Looks like he's probably going to come up to play the two on the side, would you say, Jimmy? Especially the way he's favored the side pockets. Well, he certainly has more, more margin for error by doing that, so yeah. Okay, does the five ball pass? Yes, the yeah, five he's ball passes the six, no problem. Got a good view of that. I do think this is one of these tables that if this were two to two in the match, Oscar would probably run this out in you know sixty seconds, but this he does have to roll down take to a little while and back, I think. Yeah, he does. Yeah. A little harder than he wanted. He'll probably have to play the six in the corner now. I don't or think or he, he wants to run the cube. Three rails. I don't think. I mean, there isn't much danger in going around three rails. He, I mean, it's pretty just natural. Now, he has that's been. What he chooses to do. He has been favoring shooting the balls on the side, and yeah. there he goes. Yeah, there was no real, real danger in doing that. It was. 
he would have now he would have liked to bend a couple of inches further because then he could get a little closer to his work on the seven. He may have to go ahead and just stop his ball and get right, you know, get a little bit, a little bit further. Yeah, I think he wants to draw back. Hill, hill, hill for all the dough, or hill twenty-three. I'd, I'd kind of like to be like up about eight inches away from the seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in this with inside. Oscar has such a nice little touchy draw stroke that uh, I think we'll see him just pull this back a little bit. This is a little reminiscent of that shot that Dennis had against Shane when he was running out and almost scratching the side. Pulled it back a little too far, but I think I don't think that's a risk here. A little bit too much angle. Nice shot. Drama. Tell you what, drama. what, drama lama. what a set this one was. Johnny Archer showed a lot of heart too. There it is. Archer's gonna concede. That's it, folks. It is over. Oscar takes it down, 25 Oscar to 23. Wins. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in to BBTV. This is Joey Ryan from Pool Player Podcast along with Jimmy Mendoza. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors uh, and everybody that purchased the stream. Uh, stay tuned for even more action coming from Griff's Las Vegas in the near future. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. It's absolutely right. I'm going to tune in real quick too. My name is Ben Sutherland. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to BBTV. We appreciate you guys supporting the stream. Thank you so much to the sponsors, uh, the VIP purchasers, uh, everybody that was involved, Griffs. Uh, I can't even begin to name everybody. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to go ahead and run some sponsor ads and commercials uh, just to kind of wrap the evening up. I would also like to give a personal thank you to Jimmy Mendoza and Joey Ryan for coming out here from Arizona and doing commentary on this event. Thank you guys very much. Welcome. Thank you guys for listening in. And congratulations to Oscar Dominguez on his his victory. And uh, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Oh, man, he touched the 10 ball. I was going to run up there and make the winning 10 ball. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. <laughs>